be ready, heart be steady, cause the air gets heavy. The game is here, no time for fear. This is a special Friday edition of Taco Cabana Thursday Night Lights, presented by Thomas J. Henry. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Bernie, Texas, home of the champion Chargers. It is Thursday Night Lights, a Friday edition. We are under the Friday Night Lights as Alamo Heights takes on Bernie Champion. Good evening, everybody. I'm Don Harris, along with my broadcast partner, Chuck McAtinick, down on the sidelines. And tonight, a big-time rivalry and a big-time district clash. Both of these teams undefeated. And, Chuck, you don't have to tell either one of these teams that this is a big game. No, it's interesting, Don, right? So you've got a brand-new coach, although a coach that's not brand-new to the area, in Ron Ritterman for Alamo Heights. And, of course, and of course Keith Kaiser has been at Bernie Champion for quite a while. Again, new coaches maybe on one sideline, but this is a rivalry that has spanned quite a while, and there's a lot at stake tonight for a myriad of reasons. Throw in the fact that it is a rivalry game. Yeah, and you look at the district champion uh, standings here in District 15, 5A Division II. Champions 4-1, they're 2-0 in district play. Alamo Heights also 2-0, so this is for first place in district, undisputed right now, and champion moving up the rankings in our TNL top 10. As for Alamo Heights, when they have the football, you'll see a lot of George Flesher. He carries the load over 300 yards on the year, and Chuck, they love to run the football with this guy. Well, you know, Ron Ritterman offense, Don, as well as anybody, that's always starts and ends with the running game. And yeah, George Flesher, just a junior, this young man, quintessential bell cow. He's going to have his hands on the ball a lot tonight. Alamo Heights has got a really talented quarterback too, and we're going to talk about that as we move on through the course of the evening. Yeah, and he's going to be trying to avoid this guy. Landon Eads is a load at defensive end for Bernie Champion. 6'3", 285 pound man, and he's got some college looks as you might expect. A little bit of a late bloomer, but as the story goes, and this is one of those things where the legend is going to continue with Mr. Eats, is that last week Tyvee tried to block him with three guys and he still moved the pile back. So look out for this man tonight. Hey, it's a Friday night edition of Thursday Night Lights. We've got an extended pregame show for you. When we come back, we'll have our Thomas J. Henry keys to the game. Birdie Champion hosting Alamo Heights. It's going to be a great night of football. Stay with us. This is Taco Cabana Thursday Night Lights, presented by Thomas J. Henry and sponsored by Vulcan Materials Company, America's Diamond, the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, RNL Certified Auto Group, Air Serve Heating and Air Conditioning, Affordable Health Insurance Agency, Orange Theory Fitness, Air Today Heating and Air Conditioning, Guild Mortgage, San Antonio Sports, Methodist Healthcare, Plumbing Today. Texas Water Advisor, Beluga Air, Bargain Warehouse Outlet, JD Collision Express, Air Conditioning Service Company, the San Antonio International Airport, Central Med, Mammoth Contracting, and Monarch Trophies. Welcome back to Bernie, Texas. We're at Bernie ISD Stadium, home of the Bernie Champion Chargers as they host Alamo Heights tonight. And it is time for our keys to the game, sponsored by Thomas J. Henry. And Chuck, let's first talk about Coach Ron Ritterman and those Alamo Heights mules. Well, they got to trust the process, Don. I mean, this is a new coach to a new school. Kids are learning some new stuff. They've gotten better every week, and so far they have trusted the process. Secondly, this is going to be important for both teams tonight. Got to protect the football. And then for Heights, they've got to stop the run because that's what Bernie Champion likes to do a lot. Coach Ron Ritterman. Everybody's dealt with what we've dealt with uh, this season, but we felt like we were a little behind when we got started right after Labor Day. And uh, but to the to the credit of the football players, man, they've jumped on board with everything we've asked them to do. 
Uh, they're working extremely hard. We just feel like we're short on time every week. Uh, we're, we're doing some things to kind of change the culture around here. At the same time, you're trying to prepare for a football game on Friday night. So uh, we just need more time in the day uh, to do what we're doing. But, but I can't complain about the football players, the coaching staff, the, the parents, the community. Everybody's on board. And when you have that in place, then you have a chance to improve. And that's what's kind of happened the last couple of weeks. We've gotten a little bit better. Uh, and we feel like we're playing our best football right now, but we're going to have to play our best game of the year this Friday. We think we can stop them uh, with no problem, not, not to be too cocky, but we got a lot of guys uh, who play really well, who play really hard. I think our, big, our, uh, our biggest strength is we just play with, uh, with high effort and we don't give up on the play. Uh, so I think, that's, I think that's what gives us the best shot in every game and every snap is that we just play with the, we, we play with the best effort on the field. They have a really good defensive line, a really good uh, really just overall solid defense. We're, uh, we're excited to play against them. It's really going to be a test uh, to our strengths and what we need to work on throughout the weeks. This is a, a great community. Again, the support's unreal uh, from the, the, the students, the faculty, the, the administration, the parents, everybody in the community. They want the Alamo Heights Mules to be successful, and that's cool to be part of that. Uh, but to go play on TV and to let other people see how we're doing it, we, we want to do it the right way. We want to be the most aggressive, physical football team out there, but do it with class. And hopefully at the end of the night, when I walk across the field to shake hands with the opposing head coach, and that's what he says is, Coach, you, you know, your guys play hard and do it the right way. Uh, and that would be a proud moment for me. Both of these coaches do exactly that. Bernie Champion went all the way to the state semis last year. They're four and one undefeated in district play. Chuck, what are their keys tonight? Well, this is a team that's really built with a solid defense. So what they want to try to do, Don, jump out early. If they feel like they can get the lead at Bernie Champion, they feel like the other team is going to be forced to do things it's not naturally accustomed to doing. Secondly, Got to protect that football for sure. And then lastly, keep improving as a team. You know, we talk about this being a rivalry game. You've got two proud programs that see each other each and every single year. But at Bernie Champion, the main message is, how are we going to improve each and every week as a team? So yes, we've got an opponent tonight, but it's more about trying to improve within yourself and as a ball club, not necessarily worrying about the opponent. Let's hear from Coach Keith Kaiser and the Chargers. We keep getting a little bit better each week. It's it's what everybody's going through. You know, when you don't have that whole spring semester and, and kids going through a true off season, um, our, our young kids are having to learn on the on the fly right now. And you know, we, we have some key returning guys from last year that played 15 games, but we have a ton of young kids that are uh, trying to learn this level of football and what it looks like on a weekly basis and and they're getting better each week. I think we were just all getting more comfortable as a team, you know, just kind of new players, new team and just getting back into the groove of things. We have a great team chemistry and everyone's working really well together so it makes everyone do want, want to push themselves to make themselves do better. They, they just play really good defense, their corners are real lengthy, they have some tall guys that are just going to just going to be ball hawks, and we just got to be able to hit them short, short, and then get some run game in, and then also hit them over the top with, uh, with our assets that we have. Yo, know, nobody has to tell him this is a rivalry game. You know, he knows, and those kids are going to remind him of that, and, and he's going he's gonna to rise up and get those uh, Alamo Heights ready. Yeah, both teams fired up for this one. So are we. Alamo Heights and Bernie Champion closing in on kickoff when we come back. We'll show you the, some of the fantastic finishes in TNL history. We're back with that on Thursday Night Lights, a special Friday night edition, live from Bernie. Closed captioning for today's game is sponsored by Texas Water Advisor. What a ball game. We came out a little slow. Our defense kept us in that game. They did great. They played a physical, physical football game. We made some adjustments after half, came back and executed. Yo, I'm just so doggone proud of, of uh, the bar kids to keep battling and keep battling, and not give up and not look for an out. You know, and I don't want to say that's, it's been easy in the past. And, yo, know, our, our kids just kept believing and fighting. All of a sudden, yo, know, we got to, Sophomore make a big play down back up in our goal line and 
you know, and all game long, our, our D line play trip with our linebackers, DBs. I mean, it was, it was a hard fought game. Yes, sir. Keith Kaiser's built quite the program out here at Bernie Champion. That a flashback to some of their one of their greatest moments in school history as this team is advancing deep into the playoffs year after year. And speaking of flashing back, Chris Kotfus, who really is the architect of TNL, has been all over this since 2009 when we kicked this off. And we've had some incredible games. Here is a look back at some of these great, fantastic finishes. for the win. Ronaldo Sanchez from 35 yards out. It is up, plenty of leg. It is good. Southside wins it in double overtime. 35 yard field goal from Ronaldo Sanchez. And the final score in double overtime, Southside 38, Brackenridge 35. Pandemonium yeah. in South San Antonio. Welcome to 29-4A, Cardinals. For the win. Kick is up. Kick is good. Budari for 48 yards. What a clutch kick. What a great kick. So this has been just an entertaining barn burner of a ball game. And glad you got to watch it up close. All right, let's go. Let's see. Fourth and one. Four seconds. The whole game on one play. Emil in the gun. Yinsky in motion. Emil on a roll to his right, throwing back to his left, got a man, caught, touchdown Fredericksburg. <laughs> Trip Dennis. And the battling Billies, the way this one's going, I wouldn't be surprised if they go for two. I mean, don't you have to? One play for W. And they're gonna blow whistles. And we're going to have a delay a game on Fredericksburg, which will back it up. Does that affect your decision if yeah. you're Lance Moffitt? I don't know. I mean, it might mind. And it comes down to this. All right, here we go. Emil rolling, firing. Got it. Caught! Good! Fredericksburg wins on a two-point conversion. At the end, Bernie said no, Fredericksburg said yes, and the Batland Billies walk off on a final two-point conversion here in Bernie. What a ball game. That happened right here at this stadium, week one of this season. We hope to have another fantastic finish for you here tonight. Chuck, we've got two good teams. Who knows? But that had to be one of the greatest catches in the history of TNL. No question about it, Don. And we've had some barn burners over the years. And, you know, that Burbank game back in the day comes to mind. But Fredericksburg and Bernie, that was an all-timer as well. I mean, just couldn't think of a better way to start off the 2020 campaign with all the shutdowns and the startups and then shutting down and cancellations to have that kind of a ball game. It's been a heck of a 2020 so far for sure. We're looking forward to this one tonight. When we come back, we'll have our game time weather, our national anthem, and we'll kick it off here. Bernie Champion hosting Alamo Heights. Fourth down and 12, big play here for the Clark defense potentially. Brockwell looking to throw towards the end zone and Schuler in traffic. Oh, what a catch. Touchdown. Unbelievable right there. You know, sometimes you just throw it up there and say, hey, go get it. Hey, contact, goes up and get it, finish the catch. What a great play. Early candidate for catch of the year. That is impressive. Kid is a special talent, too. High kick, backs him up to the 15, runs up to catch it, breaks a tackle, breaks two to the 30, and Chuck, you called it across the 40, still on his feet. Fjord across midfield, he breaks free. Fjord to the house, touch.
touchdown, champion Chargers. Have you driven a Fjord lately? Uh, hey, man. Hey, partner, that's your best yet. That was awesome. I still get a kick out of that one. Well, you're very kind, and we got an update on Bowen Fjord and what he's been up to, and apparently he was going to go on a Mormon mission to Italy before the shutdown, so he's doing his mission stateside. But when he's done, he's going to be playing football at Utah State. So great kid, great young man, doing great things. And, I mean, I think we could see it on that night for sure that he was bound to be doing something playing football at the next level. No question about it. Hey, let's go down to the sideline and be, introduce you to Zach Hedrick, who's standing by as the Mules come out to play right behind him. Yeah, and they're ready tonight. It's another perfect night for football. Carbon copy of the weather that we had last night. And speaking of Alamo Heights, their defensive unit coming off a shutout last week. So their unit is certainly riding high, but they know they're in for a tall task tonight against Bernie Champion. And then speaking of the Chargers as well, you guys set it up in the in the pregame. You know, this is a battle for first place. Both these teams are undefeated in district and Bernie Champion looking for the inside track. They beat Kerrville Tyvee last year, so they're looking. It's the only team they lost to last season in district play. So again, setting up for a great matchup tonight. And I don't know if we can get a shot of it, but the inflatable game is strong out here. Check out the inflatables that these teams have. I mean, Alamo Heights, very nice showing, very well represented. But when you can come over here and take a look at the Bernie Champion Charger inflatable, I mean, holy cow, this thing is massive. I think it can swallow my whole entire apartment, guys. And Chuck and I remember when we used to have to just use paper and duct tape and crayons. The, making the banner every week was a big thing for like the key club or the Rick club or the whatever so spirit group you were in. And now it's all professionally done and very nice from both schools. High school football in Texas has evolved, y'all. Yep, it's time for our Air Today game time weather. Zach talked about it just a second ago. Just like last night, it is perfect for football. 61 degree, degrees, clear, and it is calm, and it is beautiful. And here come the Mules. Alamo Heights, the visiting team here tonight, and they're all white. And when we come back, we'll get ready for our national anthem, and we'll kick it off. We're going to keep it right here as these Alamo Heights Mules Chuck, you talked about it, Ron Ritterman in his first year at Alamo Heights, but of course, he's not new to San Antonio. He knows the culture. Uh, he's been a very successful coach at Johnson High School and has already done a really good job in kind of changing the culture there at Alamo Heights. Well, you know, it all started back in his days at Texas State. He was a quarterback there, so, you know, football definitely in his blood. He's made it his life's passion. and. It's really interesting to see what's been going on at Alamo Heights with all the challenges that 2020 has obviously presented. But you know, Don, they're redoing their entire athletic facility over there. So they've kind of been nomads on their own campus in terms of how they've been able to get everybody assembled, get any, everybody to practice every day. Heck, they had two practices canceled because of lightning. They couldn't send them into a clubhouse, wait for the lightning to cease before they could come back to practice. They had to send everybody home because there was nobody to, nowhere to send them. So quite a number of challenges for Ron Ritterman, but one thing that we have noticed, what's happened and what you'd expect from a Ron Ritterman coach team is that this squad has gotten better and more sturdy each and every week that it's taken the football field. So we should be in for a whale of a ball game tonight. Looking forward to it right now. They've asked us to stand, so it's time for our national anthem. Let's turn it over to the public address announcer here in Bernie. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, the champion JROTC program. Presentation of the colors are Cadet Staff Sergeant Sierra Bain as American flag. Cadet Staff Sergeant Ashton Derrick as Texas flag. Cadet Airman Sarah Gardner and Cadet Airman Annabelle Guthrie as American and Texas guards.
ever felt. Uh, was, uh, they were a great team, and our guys came out and played great. Defense wins championships, and they got us the ball, and we got we took advantage of it. You know, we we dreamed of this, and now it's coming true. It's a dream come true. A special Friday edition of Taco Cabana Thursday Night Lines, presented by Thomas J. Henry. Welcome back to Bernie. The champion Chargers and Alamo Heights Mules are flipping the coin as we speak. We've got a little honorary captain out there. And our officiating crew announcing that Bernie has elected to receive. They'll get the ball first. Alamo Heights will be kicking off. That's our referee, Jim Sartwell, and his crew. Thrill of a lifetime for that little Charger fan as he got to be the captain and flip the coin here tonight. Yeah, Don, I think he's actually a lot bigger if he's walking next to you or me, but when you're walking next to Luke Heck, <laughs> make you look a little smaller than you actually are. There's some juice in the building here tonight, Chuck. This is always a big rivalry, but even more so this year with the two undefeated records in district play, and both teams really playing well. And, and I got to tell you, I was talking to Ron Ritterman on the sideline before the game, and one of the things that he wasn't expecting when he went to Alamo Heights is how different the game atmospheres would feel in this classification. You know, when you're at Johnson High School, you're always playing in Heroes or Comalander. Uh, almost all your, your games are over at Northside. He said one of the fun things to do it, that he's realized is, you know, going to Kerrville Tivy, Medina Valley, and, and Bernie. Th this is the Texas high school football experience when teams are playing in their home stadiums with the stadiums on the campus. And he says it's been a real thrill, thrill to, uh, to kind of feel the Friday Night Lights vibe of Texas high school football. And it's always a real treat. I know you'll attest to this too, coming here to Bernie to watch a football game. It's our RNL certified auto group first half kickoff. It's taken by the Greyhounds back at the 15 and still on his feet, fighting across the 30 yard line for Bernie champion is Davis Pike. He is one of their star wide receivers. We will see a lot of him tonight as you look at Carson Kaiser. If the name sounds familiar, yes, he is the coach's son, which makes him one of the most scrutinized players in the history of the Charger program. Uh, anytime you're the coach's son and you're playing starting quarterback, you're going to be under scrutiny, but he has lived up to the billing so far this year. Well, and if anybody can empathize with that, it's Ron Ritterman on the other sideline, right? Coached his own son, Hunter, who's now at UTSA. So it's first and 10, and Kaiser left-handed, slings it, completes it, and it's good enough for a mammoth contracting first down. As we take a look at the offensive starters, that was wide receiver Ryan Brandon on the catch. They're led up front by their big uh, center, a sec an all-district player in Preston Bell. And they've got a couple of receivers, both Davis Pike and Reed Cantrell, as they pick up another 10 yards here. That's Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez, A-Rod on the carry. And you take a look at the Alamo Heights defense as Bernie goes quickly. We'll talk about them in a second. Hernandez on the carry, picks up a couple on first down. The Mules defense led by middle linebacker Parker Klump. His big brother Blake was a star at Alamo Heights and ended up playing D1 football. Jaden Scott's also an all district defensive back. Kaiser slings it out and completes it. That's complete to Reed Cantrell, the senior who already has 203 yards and two touchdowns on the season. And you can tell Chuck that the uh, champion likes to go with tempo. And young Kaiser looks the part so far. Tall and good velocity with that left hand delivery. He slings it out, and that's picked. It's going to the house, jumping it, going the other way. The Alamo Heights Mules, Gage Maples with a pick six here, and the Mules are on the board first. Did he read that perfectly or what? Well, you want to stop tempo, jump around, find the football, and then find the end zone. Maples 
seeing this all the way, breaks past the offensive player, steps in front of the receiver, and then a few steps later, he's got six points on the board. What a play by Gage Maples, and the Mules strike first with defense. Fonten bien on Dukes. Try the extra point. It's up and good. And Alamo Heights strikes first here on the road. It's the Mule 7. The Chargers zip after a pick six. Touchdown, Alamo Heights. The Alamo Heights Mule cheerleaders on our Guild Mortgage Smile Cam. They're still smiling. There's a lot of time left in this one. Defense, the name of the game early as Gage Maple's still soaking in the glory of a really impressive play. Oh man, you can just feel the excitement down there on the Alamo Heights sideline after a play like that. Now we'll see how their defense responds and to get right back on the field and try to get a stop. Bernie Champion doing a really good job moving the ball down the football field with a lot of tempo, as you pointed out, Don. I always thought, as a defender, that's got to be pretty hard. You know, you're on the field for a certain amount of time, then you get a turnover that goes your way and you house it, then you got to come right back and try to get a stop on defense again. Kind of tough to do, but we'll see if they can pull it off. Davis Pike back to receive the kick from Fong Yin. This will be taken right at about the 10 yard line. Pike gets across the 30. And Kaiser and company will start right there at about the 32 yard line. And you gotta wonder if Kaiser's confidence shaken a little bit. It was a good throw. I just think Maples read it perfectly and maybe saw something on film this week that made him think he could do that and he just timed it perfectly. Well, you know, Carson Kaiser's only a junior, so had a pretty good TD to interception ratio coming into this ball game, thrown for almost 1,000 yards at nine TDs on the season. So, you know, still learning the position, I'm sure. Turns and hands it off to A-Rod. Rodriguez has 505 yards and five touchdowns on the year. Picks up a couple there. He's only a junior is Carson Kaiser, but last year in this district, he was first team all district as a punter. So we'll see him punt it tonight as well. Star athlete as he turns and hands it to Rodriguez, who gets across the 40 yard line, nearing the marker. He'll be short by about a yard and a half. Well, you know, that's just such a huge play for Alamo Heights, obviously. You're coming in here on the road, you know, get a quick start, man. It just gives you so much more confidence to start a football game. Here's Kaiser, hands it off to Rodriguez. And he's pushed back, but he gets forward progress, and they'll move the sticks for another Mammoth contracting first down as Cody Burke and company were there to meet him. And here come the Chargers again going with tempo. They've got Reed Cantrell at the bottom of your screen. They fire to him and he just can't quite hold on. He's another really long, lanky target. First team all district player a year ago. And we've got a Beluga player profile on Reed Cantrell. 6'4", 215 pounds. And again, first team all district in this district last year as a junior. Yeah, Don, you know, we did a story on him on our Sinclair family of channels. And this is a young man that had a devastating knee injury last week, last year in week 12. And he has come back nicely, but he's a guy that's gonna command a lot of attention during the course of a football game. Rodriguez on first down with a nice game, or on second down rather. Puts champion in position to convert here at third and five. Rodriguez by far their favorite target to hand the football to with 75 carries on the year. Third down and about four. That ball's completed over the middle. Good for a first down and breaking free, going down the sideline. That's Aiden Pickett 
He's forced out of bounds, but not before he gets another mammoth contracting first down into the Central Med red zone. A big time play for the Chargers. Yeah, good throw and Aiden Pickett able to pop it outside, but let's not forget Ryan Brandon throwing a little block right there to help spring the extra yardage. And, you know, we saw so much of that on display last night in the San Houston game. Rodriguez crosses the goal line, touchdown Chargers. Well, that was a quick answer. Indeed it was. We talked about how hard it is to play defense when you get a pick six to have to come out and try to get a stop. But Alex Rodriguez making a nice transition. This young man last year was a JV guy. So he's really grown up quickly and you know made this transition from JV to varsity look pretty seamless. The extra point up and good. We've got a tie ball game here in Bernie. Champion answers the big defensive play by Alamo Heights with a touchdown of their own. And we're tied up in a good one here in the first quarter. Hey, TNL fans. Taco Cabana is proud to once again be the title sponsor of Thursday Night Lights. Enchiladas are back. It's Enchilada Fest. Stop by any Taco Cabana and enjoy so many to choose from. Make plans now to visit Taco Cabana after the game or this weekend. Enjoy the rest of the game. There's Coach Keith Kaiser, done a great job here at Champion High School. Last year, he took his team deep into the playoffs yet again to the 5A Division II State Semis. 13 and two a year ago, six and one in this district. Yeah, and he's been here for so long, we forget he was at Marshall, right? Then we saw one of those clips on the pregame show and then walking it off when he was at Marshall. He did a great job when he was there too. That kick is taken by the up man, George Flesher. Good special teams defense there by the Chargers. They'll see a lot of Flesher tonight as we talked about. He is a key to this Alamo Heights offense. Got 65 carries already on the year. He's their leading rusher. As we take a look at James Sobey. Sobey and his backup, Chase Christensen, have both played a lot this year. Sobey started the season, had an injury, made him miss a game or two. Now he's back, 6'4", 195. So two long, tall quarterbacks here tonight. Yeah, and this young man's gonna have a chance to play college football at the next level for sure, just a junior. and. Also gonna have some opportunities to play baseball as well. So it's first and 10 and Sobey throws on first down. He completes it to the outside and Champion does a good job of swarming John York. You gotta be on your P's and Q's too if you're Alamo Heights because this Bernie Champion defense is legit. Second down and three. So be trying to draw him off sides. Instead, hands to Flesher, and he's not going to get the first down. Maybe a gain of one. Take a look at the Taco Cabana starting lineups on the offensive side of the ball. Kleberg, one of the favorite receivers, along with Jack Sawyer. He's got eight catches. He's their leading receiver. They're led up front by their big center, Boone Hetrick. Third down and one, Alamo Heights. The hand of Flesher, he breaks a tackle. And it looks like the spot is gonna be very close. First look, it looked like they gave him the, the yardage and now it looks like he's gonna be short. Oh man, tell you what, it's gonna be dirty yards in the middle for Alamo Heights, it's gonna be really tough sledding and you're gonna have to earn everything. Ritterman wants to punch it up at it. Ritterman wants a measurement here and it, I don't blame him. It, it's, it's the length of a football, it looks like. Maybe a little less. So it's the official's timeout. We'll see if they bring the chains out. The down marker wasn't exactly where the football was and that was a little misleading. But now they'll bring out the sticks. Jim Sartwell and his crew, Robert Redding, Ron Tatch, Tony Vasquez, Jordan Bally, Stephen Hardica. Well, maybe an inch or two. I can't call it from here. I used to have good eyes, but not anymore. 
It looks like they've got oh, one link. Gene Sterator, break out your three by five card. <laughs> <laughs> or put him on TV where he can guess like yeah. the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that may have ended his career. <laughs> Well, you got a quarterback who's 6'4", so you got to like your chances on picking up a couple inches, right? But oh. then you got Mr. Eags in the middle, so. Yeah, at this point in the ball game and at this point on the field, Ritterman's going to punt it, it looks like. And Sobe, also their punter. So both quarterbacks will punt tonight. That may lead to some interesting fakes. And they snap it to Sobe. He gets it off. It's a high kick, a little short. Chargers want to stay away from it as it bounces right at the 40 and goes out of bounds at the 36. So the Chargers will have it back after their defense holds Alamo Heights at 7-7, 638 to play here in Bernie, Texas. Taking a look at our plumbing today, band cam. The champion band all decked out in their snazzy uniforms. Nice. It's good to see the bands at the games. In this COVID-19 world, we've had them some nights, some nights we have not. But high school football isn't quite the same without the atmosphere, and we're getting it here tonight in Bernie. Also got a heck of a football game so far through half a first quarter. 631 left in the first. Carson Kaiser and the Charger offense out on the field. He hands straight ahead to Hernandez, who scored the touchdown on the last drive, and it's another good gain on first down, picking up about half the yards needed, about a five-yard pickup. Alex Rodriguez, not a big kid, but he is tough. He runs hard. He finishes runs. He finishes runs physically, and they like handing it to him. That one's mishandled, and... I believe Alamo Heights rips it away from Kaiser. And Alamo Heights is going to have the football unless they rule him down. They're going to give it to the Mules. The second turnover of the night by Carson Kaiser. And Alamo Heights, Trey Sullivan just manhandled the football away from Carson Kaiser after the mishandling of the, uh, the, the handoff. Yeah, just Trey Sullivan. Good old-fashioned bully ball. Get in there and rip. And that's twice now. Alamo Heights' defense has come up with a huge play to help the offense. Making Coach Ritterman look like a genius for punting it away on fourth and inches. They get it right back. A mammoth contracting first down. Alamo Heights in Charger territory. And Sobe hoping to lead the Mules to a touchdown. Straight drop. Lot good coverage. Now he's trying to get free. He's still on his feet and scrambles and does a great job getting out of the way and finds a man across the 20. Down to the 10-yard line is Flesher. Man, how much can one guy do at the quarterback position on one particular play, right? Mercy. An unbelievable job of breaking free and then the vision to find the receiver when it becomes ad-lib time. Yeah, Sobe doing a great job keeping his eyes downfield and feeling the pressure from behind, scrambles in the open and finds a guy. We're in the Central Med red zone. They hand it off to Flesher. He dives ahead across the 10-yard line. That'll set up second down. They can still get a first down as the, about the three-yard line. Second and seven. Brett Anderson split to the left. They run the option, pitch it to Flesher. He's got a blocker, splits him, gets to the two, dives ahead, and he's pushed out of bounds right there, and he did a great job following the two blockers that were out there. Took the opening right between them to pick up the yardage. Brendan Holland, number 10, outstanding job coming over from his defensive back position and stopping that, and that's going to probably be a touchdown. So that gets the two-yard line, which means it's another Mammoth contracting first down. So a full set of downs here for Sobe and Flesher. And they like to hand it to him. There's a pre-snap penalty. And it may be a timeout. 
Riddiman wanted to talk it over, didn't like the alignment of the defense, so he blew the whistle or called the timeout before the snap, and we're back in 15 seconds. San Antonio International is the first and only airport to use the Light Strike robot, which is proven to destroy hard to kill viruses to include the virus that causes COVID-19, providing the highest level of cleanliness so you can fly easier, fly safer, and fly confident. So Ron Ritterman now has his team in the right position that he wants, first and goal. Again, George Flesher, their bell cow, 300 yards on the season, 65 carries, two touchdowns. He's a powerful back, a lot like Rodriguez on the other side, so. They got a big offensive line, Don. I mean, the shortest guy on the offensive line that's starting is 6'1". So a bunch of big boys up front to run behind for sure. Change the formation. They give it to Flesher. He dances. And they're going to mark him short. He thought he got in. A couple of his buddies, linemen, thought he did too, but not quite good tackle by the champion Chargers. It starts with that guy right there, Mr. Eats, right where he needed to be. Second down, a little option. Sobey's going nowhere. Probably should have pitched the football. And again, that Charger defense, which has been so good, led up front by Garrett Menzies there, the linebacker, an all-district player from a year ago. And all of a sudden now, we've got a loss on the play. It's the five-yard line, so it's third and goal from the five. Jaden Nieves also in on the play. Great job, run blitz and selling out. Getting to the quarterback. Got there before he even considered pitching the football. Nieves, a first-team all-district performer a year ago. They've got physical defenders and they've been dominant this year, so can they hold here on third and goal? Sobe, play action, fires over the middle and it's too high for his intended receiver. And we'll see what Ron Ritterman does after that Charger defense holds from the one yard line. He's gonna run out Fong Bien to attempt the field goal. It'll be about a 21, 22 yarder. And Bien has done a very nice job kicking the football for the Mules this year. I don't know why, but when I say kicking the football in Mules, I think of the movie Gus. <laughs> the kick on its way, right down the middle. It's Bien. Fong Bien, he's fired up, and Alamo Heights takes the lead at 10-7. 3.32 to go here. Nice drive after the turnover. They didn't get the seven that they wanted, but they got the three. Yeah, but I think, again, you know, we talked about how this champion Chargers football team is built on defense. And so for Alamo Heights to come in here and come away with two turnovers, before the first quarter expires. I mean, that's a huge statement, especially coming on the road and you know you're in a big ball game. But the other team's offense know you're gonna be here all night too. Champion likes to go fast. They'll get the ball back. Exciting players out here tonight. Quality football. And like you said, Chuck, we're gonna see some of these guys go on to do big things at the next level. Well, I mean, this Bernie champion squad is built first with its defensive line. I mean, you can't say enough about 99. And we'll go into his story as the night goes along, but they've got other guys up there that can really play. Luke Heck, number 90, really good player. Carson Schwartz. I mean, this is the blood and guts of this football team. So, again, I think we're only getting started here tonight. The end's kick is high. They're trying to keep it away from Davis Pike. Kind of pooch it. It's taken by the up man and cross the 35-yard line down to about the 36. <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys are playing through the whistle too, man. There were three separate guys going tete a tete right through the whistle, man. That was fun. It is a rivalry. <laughs> Seen some classics over the years. Oh yeah, I can't think of a better place to be tonight. It was great to see that flashback that Chris Kotfuss had of Alamo Heights winning the state championship as 
Kaiser hands off to Rodriguez. That Giovanni Vizza led Alamo Heights team that beat RG3, Robert Griffin III, and his squad in the Alamo Dome. That's completed to Cantrell. Vizza went on to play quarterback at North Texas and at Texas A&M. He was on Frank Wilson's staff here at UTSA, and he's now the quarterback's coach at Southeast Louisiana. Well, you got quarterbacks from the Bernie area too, right? And I mean, this is this quarter, this rivalry has produced a lot of great quarterbacks for sure. Nice run by A. Rod right up the middle, and not only does he hit the hole quickly, he he seeks contact. You know, Coach Kaiser said, you know, we knew this kid could play. We just didn't think he was as good as he's showing us. He cuts it back inside again, and he's got another four or five. And I tell you what, when you run like he does, and you're picking up big chunks in the five and six yards of carry category, you build the trust of your coach. Because offensive play callers know the one thing they want as flags fly for movement from the charger line. The one thing you want as a play caller is to know you can get three or four yards on first down. You don't want to be behind the sticks. And if you've got a guy that gets getting you five or six, seven yards a pop on first down, he's going to keep calling your number. Well, I mean, look at that last run. I mean, just a really good job of recognizing exactly where he needs to go with the football and then a really quick foot in the ground and then boom, he's gone. First and 15, so Kaiser's going to sling it and I tell you what, we almost had a little deja vu. Gage Maples jumped it again and almost picked it again. It's just playing center field and got that big right hand up to knock it away. Another step, and you're right. You might have housed that one. What a jump on the football Gage Maples has shown tonight. So that sets up second and 15. We just talked about getting behind the chains. You had the penalty and an incompletion, and so now you're forcing Kaiser to put it up here. He's got two really good receivers. Instead, they go back to Rodriguez, who gets half of it back. A little more, it'll set up a very manageable third down and about four. He's got great feet, and we're told he used to play soccer, so maybe a little bit came from that, but gave it up when he saw a blossoming football career and probably made the right choice. Here he is again. He does a really good job of cutting back inside and picking the hole, and he does it again, and he's picked up another mammoth contracting first down. Alex Rodriguez, st star of the show here tonight. Yeah, and Coach Kaiser, like, coaching backwards, right? You think you got them all behind the sticks on second and 15, and all you do is give it to 25 a couple of times, and you keep the drive alive. First down and 10 for Kaiser. Going to throw it out deep. One-on-one -on -one coverage, and he just missed his intended receiver, Davis Pike. Good play call, good execution, just a little bit overthrown. Now, they've got all kinds of talent on the outside, too. So if you try to own in and really focus in on the run, they can burn you outside, too, with some of these young guys that they have. And, of course, Reed Cantrell, such an amazing weapon at tight end. So that'll set up second down and 10 from the 26. They bring Cantrell in motion. They hand it to Rodriguez. He cuts back and spins. I get the sense that Rodriguez doesn't always attack the hole that he's the play's designed for. He's got great eyes, and he, he makes his decision about where he's going to go right after he takes possession of it. He's so quick laterally. Sometimes if that hole's closed, he'll pick another. Kaiser running for his life, rolling left. Now he'll throw it, and he just decides to ground it, basically. Smart play. Live the play another way, another day. Good coverage by Jaden Scott. He's an all-district performer as a cornerback, and he also returns kicks for Alamo Heights, and Ron Ritterman very high on Jaden Scott. How about number seven here, and as Chris Kotvis told us, that's a, what we call a Kaiser roll. <laughs> oh, he never misses a beat. Between driving a fjord lately and the kick is bien. <laughs> you guys are killing me in the truck, man. <laughs> Kaiser 
into double coverage, and that's Pitt. Did he get a foot in? They say no. It was close. Well, even if he had, that's as good as a punt, right? And actually, when the possession, the field position game there, had it been an interception. I think he was in too. But that's why they get paid. <laughs> it's all right. Good defense on the back end by the Mules, clearly. And did a really good job on that drive. Clump was the guy that snuffed out the second down play and then you know, he had good pressure on the quarterback on third down and then Brady Champion trying to go for the home run there on fourth down and had two guys back there, including number 26, who did a fine job on the play, Jaden Scott. So a new set of downs and a mammoth contracting first down for James Sobey, who completes it on first down out to his one of his favorite targets, John York. I didn't see what happened after the play, but it looked like maybe a face mask. Maybe it was a personal foul of some sort. Well, I love to bring out the baseball guys, and Mr. York can play some baseball. That was a heck of a catch. Yeah, a personal foul face mask. I don't think that looked intentional, but doesn't really matter. If you get a uh, hold of it, you're going to cost your team 15 yards, and so they'll tack that on to an already nice play for Alamo Heights. So that puts the Mules in champion territory as Keith Kaiser looks on and wants a little clarification. Speaking of John York, he's 6'1". He's got a 93 average in school, and as you said, Chuck, plays a couple of sports. And that so, Young Men's Service League is a really good deal, too. They got that over at Clark. These young guys doing great stuff in the community. Two wide receivers split wide. And this is a designed run for Sobe. He doesn't get much. And <laughs> some of those big guys up front, Luke Heck, land the needs. I tell you what, man, they're getting after each other tonight, man. These, these linemen on both sides. Tell you what, there is some massive train wreckage going on. The guy's just playing clean and hard. You gotta love it. Between the tackles for Alamo Heights, they go 250, 295, and 275. All around 6'3 to 6'5. So these are big kids for the mules. And this is an outstanding line as Sobe hauls back and throws into single coverage. And they're gonna get pass interference call here. Caleb Serber was all over the intended receiver. He just got there a little bit early. Good coverage, I thought, for most of the play, but may have bumped him right as the ball arrived. Well, great job first off by the protection for Alamo Heights because Champion was coming. So in order to give their quarterback some time, they had to block it up first, and they did. So that'll be 15 more. So Alamo Heights cashing in on a Face mask of 15, and now pass interference of 15, and that's got them in position to score again here early in this ball game. Well, we've seen George Flusher run the football quite well tonight, and that was a heck of a block, young man, saving your quarterback. Only got a play or two left here in the first quarter, 12 seconds to go. George Flesher behind Sobe on first down from the 32. Flesher right up the middle going nowhere and they blow whistle down right there at the 30 and that'll be the end of the quarter good one so far both offenses impressive very physical football alamo heights leads champion here at home for the chargers it's 10-7 we're back with second quarter action and the mules on the move Welcome back. It's our air serve heating and air conditioning first quarter highlights. One of the first plays of the game. Gage Maples to the house on the Oski. Put the mules up 7-0. Champion answered right back. Alex Rodriguez helped drive him down the field. He did a great job of getting in to make it 7-7. Alamo Heights added a field goal. It's 10-7 mules. They've got the ball to start the second quarter as they switch ends. They're Got second down in about eight. Right at the Bernie Champion 
30-yard line. Their quarterback, James Sobey, dropped back to pass, fires to his favorite target, George Flesher. He gets outside, flag flies, may have had an illegal block. And we'll see what the call is after the short game. Jaden Nieves, 33, and Don is flying around this football field tonight, regardless of what the call is. I mean, it seems like this year's young guy's on, in on every play. They've got an ineligible receiver, ineligible receiver. One of the offensive linemen got downfield a little bit too quickly as we go down to Zach Hedrick. Thanks, Don. I tell you, so we've had a lot of great crowds so far this season at TNL, but this one is arguably one of the best. I mean, both spirit squads are out here tonight. The Birdie Champion Band is bringing the energy for both bands. The Alamo Heights Band isn't here tonight. And you know I'm a band guy, former member of the Pride of Oklahoma here. But there's a, also a sizable student section for Bernie Champion tonight. They got a yell leader too. You might be getting ready to join AM's yell leaders one of these years. So, man, it is a great energy, great atmosphere down here tonight. Zach, did you ever privately want to be in the Sooner Schooner? You know, that was, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, kind of, but I mean, the, the seats for the band for the Pride of Oklahoma were second to none. We're probably, between the 30 and 40 on the student section. So I what mean, you're saying is you were only in the band for the football seats. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wanted to play in the band because, I mean, hey, you can't pass up four years of OU football. You're a good drummer. I Well, I, I was sad Sam Houston wasn't there last night, their band, because they were kind enough to let me knock off some rust on the drums last year. I remember that. Sobe, rolling, being chased. Now fires, goes to the end zone, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and. A good fight for the football. And Caleb Serber comes out the victor on that one-on-one -on -one matchup with John York. What a great job there. Inside leverage the entire time, Don. Running stride for stride with this receiver. Look at that. Couldn't have played it any better. Perfectly played, broken up, and nice job by Sobe to roll out and, and make that throw. Very impressive throw on the run, being chased by some very athletic, these big guys up front for for champion, when you look at them, they don't look like they're gonna be fast, but they are really athletic. Third, 13. Whistles blow, flags fly. It'll be a delay of game as Ritterman's squad didn't quite snap it quick enough. So it'll be third and 18. And, you know, Alamo Heights has been knocking on the door a couple times, had a first and goal from the one and had to settle for three. And now after some big penalties on champion, gave them a great opportunity all the way down to the 30. Now they're going backwards here with third and 18. Fires across the middle, it's caught. Not enough for a first down, but it gets it to the 30 yard line. Fong Bien's a really good kicker. I don't. I think they're maybe a little bit out of his range here. So It'd be about 47. And so they'll go for it. That was a really good play design there on third down and the Alamo Heights offensive line really holding up well on the previous play. So they got to get the first down here. So be pressured. Fires the out route, almost completed it. Nice throw, but good coverage again. And that time, the defense holds Leighton Parker with the coverage. Chargers have the football back when we come back. Welcome back, it's our air conditioning service company, Smile Cam. Students all out here, masked up. Charger cheerleaders enjoying senior night. As they hand it off inside to Rodriguez. First down, and there you go again. Five yards, just a big chunk. Coach's dream. Gage Maples in there on the stop. Yeah, across the board there on the offensive line, you got Bell in the middle playing center, and then to his left, Lira and Cooper, and then Wade and Strickland over on the right side. So talked about the size of the Alamo Heights offensive line. Bernie Champion ain't getting out of the way either. A lot of three hundies up there. 
And there's seven or eight more for Rodriguez, and it's going to be a South Texas Votech first down for the Chargers. Just so darn quick. And just makes really equally as quick decisions with a football. Kaiser rolling right, throwing back left, and one hops that one. Oh, Hart's putting the heat on that time, getting some pressure. They've done a really good job disguising coverages so far in this ball game. Alexander Arnold was the young man putting the heat on Kaiser on that play. So Ritterman junking up his defense a little bit tonight. He's got defensive linemen dropping back into coverage and a lot for a young quarterback to look at. Second down for Kaiser, just a junior as we talked about. Hands to Rodriguez, got a flag down. It came from the umpire. We've got a chop block going against the champion offensive line. What was interesting about that, you know, we've already seen Maples make some plays out on the end. He's got some quick feet, too. I mean, he was right there to plug everything up, and a couple of his other buddies were in on the tackle as well, but 48's having himself a whale of a ball game sure to is. this point. Absolutely. Those chop block calls are drive killers. Second and 25 now. Kaiser running for his life. will throw back. Good coverage. Some contact, no call, and guess who was on the coverage? It's Gage Maples again. Sets up third down and 25. And Alamo Heights, if they can get a stop here, they've got a great chance to flip the field with some good field position here early in the second quarter. Alex Arnold, once again, one of the fellows that's putting the heat on the quarterback. I mean, the pressure is coming from different places, and guys are making some plays here for Alamo Heights. They bring a man in motion. Instead, they hand it Rodriguez, and it's as good a call as any on third and 25. Gets to about the 41-yard line. And a good call, because now a good punt will take Alamo Heights out of what looked was going to be like great field position for them. So Bernie Champion sends Ethan Lang into punt. Gets a good kickoff. Can't do much better than that. that. Way to go, Ethan Lang. Nice punt. Alamo Heights will have it when we come back. Welcome back to our Orange Theory Fitness Band Cam. Peek in on that Charger band. Music's been good here tonight. Football's been good here tonight. James Sobey and the Mules take possession, throwing on first down, completing to the 20. Good coverage and a one-on-one -on -one tackle made as Rhett Anderson gets his first catch of the night. 24 doing a really good job on the tackle there. Leighton Parker, we've called a couple times tonight. We've had really good coverage. Caleb Serber, their corner and, and their two corners, Parker and Serber have done a really nice job. And so is that defensive front snuffing out the mules right there as this play continues, though. He's trying to push the pile. Doesn't get much. It's going to be second down. and It's going to be third down in about five. There's everybody's All-American. <laughs> don't want to be running into that guy in a dark alley. 285 pounds. And, Unless he's there to help. And man, I'm telling you, the the... I mean, I'm impressed with his size and everything, but his quickness and his feet for a guy that big. Third and five, Sobey throws a quick snap. That's almost picked off. Again, great coverage by Leighton Parker. And who knows what would have happened if he would have hung on to that one. Yeah, you know, Starts at the line of scrimmage like he's going to play off, and then all of a sudden baits the quarterback into making a throw and almost pulled it off. 
Either way, he gets credited with a pass deflection. So good job, young man. A good position. And now it's Champion who has an opportunity to flip the field here as Sobe will do the punting honors. They almost get there. Great kick. They're not Across the 50, and it's going to get inside the 40-yard line. And that's where... The Chargers will have it after we hear our, from our friends at San Antonio Sports. Well, Thursday Night Lights is, you know, a great opportunity to reach and motivate our high school athletes, their families, coaches, et cetera. Um, and we've tried to do that with the Beyond the Game program. Sinclair Broadcast Group and Methodist Healthcare have been great partners. And, um, you know, the program really uh, encourages high school and middle school teams uh, to submit narratives and pictures and videos of things that they are doing to reflect key character uh, traits, respect, selfless service. Um, those types of things uh, with community service tend to feed on each other. So we started four years ago with 20 high school submitting and last year we had over 70. And so we're anticipating a lot more this year. Uh, it keeps growing, but it really sets the tone for the coaches, parents, and players to do things beyond uh, what they do on the field or the court. We've been partners in, um, in this program for a couple of years now and at Methodist Healthcare, our mission is serving humanity to honor God. And uh, we think that getting our student athletes and our school districts involved in, in community outreach programs is a great way of living that message and, and really instilling that kind of um, process and, and behavior with uh, with a uh, within the high school on and middle school audience so um, it's just a great program and, and we were inspired by what the work the kids are doing in the communities San Antonio sports beyond the game a great program we feature it every weekend both on max sports and sports Sunday and appreciate what they do to inspire these young men and women and all the programs to do good things in the community they run a little jet sweep toss here. And on first down, they've got good yardage. But there's a flag down, and we'll have to check that. Aiden Pickett running with authority. Jim Sartwell having a busy night. Not quite as busy as last night. Call an illegal shift on that formation execution of the play. Nice little play by Keith Kaiser's squad. First and 15. Gonna make it first down and 15. Carson Kaiser brings his squad up to the line. Again behind the change. They run it inside here. Nice little reverse. And across the 40 to the 45-yard line is Ryan Brandon. How about that play design? Junior coming from his wide receiver spot. Looks like he's got some skis. Hernandez has been such a threat. Just the potential to fake it to him. Kind of softened up that defense. And that makes it second down and about two. But Hernandez... Behind Kaiser, they hand it to him. He's got the first down and a lot more across midfield. That's a South Texas Botech first down. And Alex Rodriguez again with five or six on the carry. You can tell Alex runs track too. We talked about doing a little soccer, but man, just an explosive football play. Give him the football here. Look out. Alex Rodriguez across the 40. Another pickup of about 11. Another South Texas Botech first down. Alex Rodriguez having himself a night. Well, coach said they really see so much more in him, if you can believe that. I mean, he's really growing up quick. Kaiser slings it out to the right-hand side. That picks up about four on first down. That's Ryan Brandon with the catch. Good tackle in open space by the Alamo Heights Mules. Again, there's so much attention to Reed Cantrell. It's going to open up for some of these other guys to get some opportunities as well. Rodriguez that time hopped laterally the wrong way. 
because Cody Burke was there waiting for him and makes a nice tackle. Yeah, this Alamo Heights defense has done a really great job. I mean, doing as best they can to limit what Champion is able to do on the ground and then also coming up with some big plays and putting some heat on the quarterback as well. So doing a good, really good job of keeping everything in front and picking their spots and making some plays along the way. Second quarter moving quickly here, 5.16 to play. Champions got it, Kaiser slings it, completes it. Cantrell broke a tackle, got across the 25. That's 16, not 15. That's Aiden Pickett. Yeah, That's an impressive run after the catch by that young man. Yeah, he was the young man on the first carry of the series, and I could tell they want to get this young man the ball too if they can. Here's Rodriguez up the middle. Picking his way through the traffic. He's still up. Now they whistle him down. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Parents here are a little fired up. I'm just happy that Alex Rodriguez apparently has got a little rubber band in him because, man, that did not look like it was going to end well for him. But obviously a little stretch Armstrong in him too, huh? champion crowd screaming for them to blow the whistle a little bit earlier but Rodriguez loves to fight for every yard there he goes again again picks up four tells you a little bit about his mental makeup too right you have a play like that you come with just as much authority the next play he's he's got what I like to call a Manu motor these guys that just just have a, a, a different level of being able to go from zero to 100 in a split second all the time. The ball's loose on the reverse, and a good stop by the Mules defense as they swarm Ryan Brandon for a loss. Well, they've gone to Ryan Brandon a couple times on this series, and obviously it's really tough to execute a football play when, first of all, have to track the football. You know, I think it sounds crazy on fourth and 10 at this part of the football field to run it. But I tell you what, Alex Rodriguez might be your chance, your best shot at 10 yards, the way he's been running the football. They fake it to him. Kaiser throws deep and overthrows his intended receiver well out of bounds. And the Alamo Heights defense holds. Two good defenses here tonight. We're back in 15 seconds. San Antonio International is the first and only airport to use the Light Strike robot, which is proven to destroy hard to kill viruses to include the virus that causes COVID-19, providing the highest level of cleanliness so you can fly easier, fly safer, and fly confident. So Alamo Heights gets the turnover on downs. Good football game here, 10 to seven. Defense is playing well, holding. It's a South Texas Botec first down for James Sobey. This is a quarterback run all the way. They sweep it to the right. Good pursuit by Champion, and they get him after a gain of about two. You see how those big fellows run to the football. And I think we're gonna have a timeout, and the Champion Chargers defense wants to talk it over. Hot pursuit. And then bringing the authority they get the quarterback down. Bernie Champion's got speed all over this defense. And whatever you're going to decide to run outside, you better make that decision quick because dudes are coming. And ill intent as well. Champion had all three timeouts. Good spot to use one to try to get the football back. And next week, we're doing it on Friday night again. As we'll have DeAndre Lewis and the Judson Rockets taking on the Smithson Valley Rangers in a huge district ball game. We were looking forward to this one from the very beginning this summer when the schedules all changed. The UIL, because of COVID, allowed Friday nights to open up. And that was one we wanted on the schedule, and we've got it. Smithson Valley with an impressive win last night. When are they not good, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know they're going to be coached up and they're going to execute. we got some dogs this year, too. Larry Hill's squad's always overperforming, and they're 
very well coached and they execute perfect. They're always in the playoff hunt, that's for sure. Sobe running right, got an option. Now pitches way late and drilled. Late Parker with a JD Collision Express nominee. Late Malay in the wood. This really strung out well by the entire Smithson Valley, or excuse me, Bernie Champion defense. And then Leighton Parker, mercy. And another timeout is Champion using two of their three to get the football back. 2.55 to play, a stop here gives them plenty of time for their offense if they're able to make the stop. You see the WAC on the back of the shoulders there, the nameplate. I asked, uh, it's the C for the champion logo, and I asked Coach Kaiser, what's the WA for? He said, we are. We are champion. He said, you know, all the programs at the school had different mottos, like, you know, win the day or uh, never stop or whatever. He said, we needed a brand, uh, kind of like uh, TFND out in Kerrville. Tyvee fight never dies. They've had it for 100 years. And he said, so we decided we are champion will be that brand for all of our programs, girls, boys, all sports. It sets the tone for the whole outset to be champions in every sport that they have. As Sobe throws down the sidelines, it's incomplete. And so those timeouts well spent. He'll have one left with 252 in the football. Now, I thought you were going to tell me that that was code that they were going to be joining the WAC soon. You know, when I first saw him, when I walked up to him and I saw WAC on his shirt, and I said, what is that? The WAC? He said, no, WA. I said, okay. And he explained it. It makes perfect sense. Well, their defense really did a great job there, no doubt. And then double coverage down the sideline to force fourth down. Sobe gets it off. And I'll tell you what, the Chargers have been threatening to block one all night long. They take the fair catch. Jake Nieves does. And time to tell you about our band grant, which we do every night. The Children's Hospital of San Antonio is going to make five grand possible for the band of TNL's entire season that gets the most votes. So if you like the Heights band and you want them to get five grand, text band 17 to 44332. Same for champion. It's just band 18. And at the end of the year, between all of the schools that appear on TNL this year and the special Friday night editions, somebody's going to give get $5,000 courtesy of the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. They hand it to A-Rod on first down and look at him pick his way all the way to the 50. Again, another first down carry where he gets you at least seven. And gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Yeah, plenty of time for Bernie Champion to kind of empty out the playbook here. And, you know, you're right. You want to take it on down, move the sticks, but you want to move the clock as much as you can, too. Five more. That moves the sticks. Another South Texas Votech first down for A-Rod. Little jet sweep to Ryan Brandon. Cuts it back right up the middle. He's across the 30. Inside Mule's territory and still 225 and counting to go for this champion offense. Nice play there. Individual ad lib cutting that back inside. Well, he's done an amazing job. I mean, he's been a nice little spark. And clearly, champion sees that it's working every time he touches it. Something good's happened. A-Rod right up the middle. This time he gets only about three. Champion still has one timeout. But like you said, Chuck, plenty of time here. Sure. They'll manage it. They'll know exactly what to do on how to take this, the rest of this drive and go forward down the field. Especially as quick as they go here with Tempo. They pitch it to A-Rod, cuts it inside. Nice move, nice power inside. The Central Med red zone right at the marker, and I believe it's going to be another South Texas Votech first down. It is. So they should stop the clock to move the chains, and it does. 
Chance Cooper <laughs> coming over. The old pancake block there on the offensive line. That was a heck of a block. First down and 10. Rodriguez again. Only back to the line of scrimmage this time is a good job done by Parker Klump, Rowan Irwin, and the linebackers of Alamo Heights who closed the gap there. Yeah, Irwin just a junior, so they got some guys getting some nice playing time in a big football game early in their high school careers. That diamond trips to the right. They run the reverse again to Ryan Brandon. Nice little wrinkle as again they play action to Alex Rodriguez and he's extremely, you gotta pay attention to him whenever they fake it to him. Champion will burn their final time out here on third down. And as we saw from the beginning, it was a rough start for Carson Kaiser. We talked about the pressure he's under being the coach's son, being a junior quarterback, but we also talked to dad and what it's like to coach when it's your own son. For him to go in and impact games on a Friday night on a big stage is, has been special. I'm a nervous wreck all at the same time. And uh, thank goodness we have other guys that coach him because, uh, you know, I, I, I sure want to be dad and I'm not real good at it because I, I, you know, I get home and, and then I turn into coach dad and, and I want to start correcting some things and my wife will say at least say one thing nice to him tonight and and I've got to remember to do that but he's really done a, a, an amazing job and I'm proud of him and but he needs to continue to keep getting better and, and for us to reach our goals he's got to play keep raising his level each week. It's a tough spot for both of them they're handling it well as Carson Kaiser drops back the pass fires across the middle he's got his man wide open it's Brian Brandon touchdown and what a crisp route that was right on cue they used the timeout perfectly I thought they were taking it early from a time management perspective but it was third down and coach Kaiser had the perfect play and his son executed it well I'll tell you what this one is having a phenomenal ball game I mean he's proven that Alamo Heights is going to have to figure out a way to slow him down because if he gets in space, and when you run a route like that, I mean, there wasn't anybody by him. And then once he gets his hands on the football, you can forget about it. I mean, this guy might be the fastest guy on the field. Mercy. Well, what a great job of executing Salute. by the players. And tip of the cap to the coaching staff who burned their two timeouts when Alamo Heights had the ball with about three minutes to go to make sure they were going to have plenty of time left and they use their clock management perfectly. Burning the last one with about 45 seconds to go on a third down, get the communication and the route that they wanted and they call the perfect play at the perfect time and Ryan Brandon does the rest. You know, Ryan, obviously a track guy, his buddy on the other side, Davis also too. And yeah, those are two of the fastest guys in the school. <laughs> They're told four or five guys certainly looked it right there. I mean, again, though, there's just the crispness of the route, being able to get off the line of scrimmage and then getting instantly separated from a guy trying to cover you, giving your quarterback a nice big target to throw to, and then once he gets his hands on the ball, he can do the rest with those quick feet. So Ethan Lang will do the honors to kick it off. Ethan's dad, Stan, is the athletic director for the Northside School District. Does a great job with the Beyond the Game program in that district, overseeing the entire COVID mess through athletic. Got a lot of admiration for Stan Lang and the job he does as AD. As we get ready for the America's Diamond Halftime Show coming up, stick around at the break. We'll hear from the bands and have our scholar athletes. Speaking of athletic directors, we got two great stands. We got Stan Lang over at Northside for sure, and Stan Leach out here in Bernie. None better than that guy as well. Yep, got really high quality educators, athletic directors, teachers, all these schools we go to, and the challenges of 2020. We can't say enough good things about everybody stepping up for the kids. First down, 37 seconds. We'll see what 
Ron Ritterman wants to do. He, does he want to throw or does he want to play safe for halftime? Doesn't have much of a choice on that one as the big fellas get there to James Sobey, Landon Eads, Luke Heck. That's what we call the coverage sack, Don. I mean, there's just nowhere to go with the football downfield. The Bernie Champion DB is doing a fantastic job running stride for stride with the receivers running deep downfield. Yeah, and I want to go back to the point we were talking about when you're talking about Stan Leach, Stan Lang, these other athletic directors around the city. Chuck, you and I have the greatest jobs in the world. We, we have the, the opportunity to get to know these guys and, and see just how they're impacting lives. The two coaches last night uh, over at Sam Houston Memorial, uh, Quincy Stewart and Kimmy Lewis, another great examples of the impact that coaches and athletic directors can have on kids' lives and the difficulties that the COVID challenges present, much less the normal real-life challenges that a lot of these kids have to deal with. But from what we've seen this year, the way these athletic directors have been able to play this many games without cancellations, and I know there's a few this week, but the positions that they were in and the things that they had to implement in a hurry uh, of the safety protocols in order to keep these kids to have some sort of normalcy, much less be able to play football games, is just absolutely amazing. Here, here. Second down and 13 with 28 seconds to go. Sobe straight back, rolls to his right, pressured, and now he's sacked. Another coverage sack as he just ran out of time. And Luke Heck, the other big fella up there with Landon Eads, gets that one. And Jack Sawyer, number 20, was running a little bit of a wheel. At some point, five just runs out of time. And this Bernie champion defense in hot pursuit. That'll run out the rest of the clock. The champion Chargers score late here in the second quarter to take a 14 to 10 halftime lead. But it's been a very high level quality football game from both defenses and offenses. And we're going to have a great one in the second half when we come back. It's the America's Diamond Halftime Show. The band, the Scholar Athletes, stick with us. Welcome to the America's Diamond Halftime Show. Welcome to Halftime 1410, your score, the champion Chargers taking a late lead here right before the half. Got a great half of second half football coming up here. It was a great first half too. And right now, the Bernie Champion Band along with their spirit squad is on the field. It's senior night tonight. And earlier this week, we cut up with the Bernie Champion High School Band Director. My name is Jason Yachts, and I'm the head director here at Champion High School. And this is actually my first year at Champion. Our band this year has uh, 188 students in our program, and that includes all members, um, color guards, front ensemble, etc. Um, right now, we have you know a, a small portion of those students are online, um, learning and participating remotely with us, um, and so we have uh, 165 students, I believe, in person uh, with us daily. So on Friday night at halftime, you're going to see our 2020 show, Charger Nation. And this year's show is really focused on community and celebrating um, community, both you know, our, our band community, uh, but also our school community and, and the greater city of Bernie. This show is, is a shortened show because of the allotted time for um, you know, the, the adjusted season but it's almost all comprised of patriotic themes that our audience certainly recognizes. Um, and then as, that's what we'll see this Friday, and that's our UIL performance. Um, and then after UIL, we're going to add another um, piece that's focused on Texas. You know, in the stands, uh, we make a concerted effort to stay in the game flow, support the team. Uh, we have a couple moments, things that we've added that um, help while following all the COVID 
um, adjustments and requirements through a UIL, we still have opportunities to connect um, the community and celebrate the event at the stadium. I tell the students this, uh, and I, I truly believe it, um, and they prove it every day. We have the best students in the state here at Champion High School. And we see it not only in our band, we see it on the football field, we see it on the volleyball court, and we see it throughout our classrooms and in all of our other sports. So um, I feel fortunate to be here, and you know, I think I think all the staff here at Champion feels the same way, and I, and I think we all learn something great from our students every day. I want to wish the Champion Charger Band luck for their UIL competition season, and then great job by the Champion Charms and their dads on the dance routine. And remember, we've teamed up once again with the Children's Hospital of San Antonio to award a $5,000 band grant. And it's all based on your vote, so it's time to get out your phones. And if you'd like to vote for the Birdie Champion Band, text BAND18 to 44332. That's BAND18 with no spaces to 44332 as they get ready for their performance here at halftime. Remember, texting guidelines can be found at the CW35.com. Thanks once again to the Children's Hospital of San Antonio for making the $5,000 band grant possible. San Antonio middle and high school athletes are doing great things for our community. San Antonio Sports and Methodist Healthcare are shining the light on teams that model key values through their actions. This week we salute several schools whose community projects demonstrate beyond the game values. Started in 2016, the Peanut Butter Bowl has grown and gained support with several area high schools joining the cause. Alamo Heights, Seguin, New Braunfels, along with several other from Northeast and Northside are collecting jars of peanut butter at each football game, which are then given to hungry families across the area. Athletes from Alamo Heights also distributed peanut butter to elementary students, supporting Snack Pack for Kids SA. These athletes demonstrated the beyond the game values of sportsmanship, selfless service, caring, integrity, and respect. San Antonio Sports and Methodist Healthcare salute high school and middle school coaches who inspire their teams to serve others. Parents, teachers, and coaches can nominate teams that go beyond the game. Visit sanantoniosports.org. You're watching the America's Diamond Halftime Show. Champion Charger Band doing a great job bringing us some sound this evening and enough for both bands tonight. Unfortunately, the Alamo Heights High School Band isn't traveling to games this year, but earlier this week, we did catch up with their band director to talk about their season. My name is David Stevenson, and I've been the director of bands here in Alamo Heights for seven years. This is starting my eighth year. We have, this year, we have right at 170 to 175 uh, members, band members, um, that's winds, percussion, and color guard and twirlers. This year, um, our original plan for our, our halftime show uh, was going to be dedicated to heroes. It was going to be a hero show. Uh, w one part of it was going to be focused on first responders, doctors, uh, people like that. The other, uh, and then it was going to go into personal heroes, parents, grandparents, uh, mentors, and things like that. So that was originally going to be our marching show um, theme. As this went along and we realized we were not going to perform a full marching show, we decided that we still wanted to honor and, uh, and recognize our heroes in our community. So we're doing a public community event, and it's and it's a spirit showcase. It's not just a band. It's going to be band as well as our um, dance team's first dance team and our cheerleaders. Uh, on November 16th, we're doing that at our stadium. It's also going to be when we recognize our seniors. We usually have a game where we do senior parents and senior uh, recognize them and thank them for four years of, of work. So we'll do it that night as well and, and recognize and honor those seniors and senior parents. Our website is uh, www.alamoheightsband.com and that usually has uh, the most up-to-date information. Uh, but we're also on social media. We have a Facebook uh, Heights Band Facebook um, page as well as um, Heights Band uh, Twitter account. Uh, so we're we're all over uh, social media and and but the most the easiest way to get our information is our website at alamoheightsband.com. 
Our thanks to Mr. Stevenson. And remember, if you'd like to vote for the Alamo Heights Marching Band, it's now time to get ready to vote again. And the number to text for them is band 17 to 44332. Again, if you'd like to vote for the Alamo Heights Band, text band 17 without any spaces to 44332. Complete texting guidelines can be found at the CW35.com. Once again, we'd like to thank the Children's Hospital of San Antonio for making this $5,000 band grant possible. Stick with us. We'll meet this week's scholar athletes right after this. Watching the America's Diamond Halftime Show. Once again, 14-10, your halftime score. The Bernie Champion Chargers taking a late first half lead over the Alamo Heights Mules. We got a good half of football shaping up here in the second half as we count down towards that. And throughout the season, we've been highlighting some great scholar athletes. And at the end of the season, Vulcan Materials is going to be awarding a $10,000 scholarship to one of those athletes. Let's meet this week's nominees. Our scholar athlete from Alamo Heights is Alex Arnold. The senior defensive lineman and team captain currently has a GPA of 93. My parents and everybody in my family has kind of instilled in me that it's, it's, it's academics and then football. Last year, Alex was named to the second team all-district defensive line. And for the past two years, he's been a member of the academic all-district team. I don't want to be average, I want to be way above average. Away from the field, Alex has been volunteering with Teens Give Back since his freshman year. It seems kind of selfish, but it gives you, like, it gives yourself a good return to know that you, that you're doing something for other people, not just yourself. He's still deciding which university he'd like to attend. I have a few options to go play college football, um, Division Three, to some really good, really good academic schools. Alex plans on studying construction management. I'm not really a big indoors guy. You won't catch me inside a lot. Our scholar athlete from Bernie Champion High School is Zach Schaefer. The senior wideout ranks 14th out of a class of about 400 students with a GPA above 108. I think family is a big part of it. I've grown up in a very well-educated family and they always want me to do my best no matter what. Off the field, Zach is a member of the UIL history team and the Champion High School Leadership Council. This year, he is also serving as the president of the Rotary Interact Club. We do a canned food drive every year, and then we also work a lot with the elderly. And so we go to retirement centers around the Bernie area and help out there in any way we can. In the spring, he stays busy by running on the Chargers track team. Last year, I ran the 4x1, the 4x2, and the 4x4. So but uh, 
didn't have much of a season. It got shut down after a couple weeks. After graduation, he looks forward to joining his older sister by becoming a Longhorn at the University of Texas at Austin. I also just got accepted to UT Austin and I'm planning on um, studying civil engineering as well. So we're gonna have two there at the same time. Who is Vulcan Materials Company? You see our trucks on roads all over San Antonio and the surrounding area. But what do we do? Well, our story began over 100 years ago. And today, we are the nation's largest producer of aggregates. That's stone, sand, and gravel. Plus, we produce construction-based materials, including asphalt and ready-mixed concrete. The stuff to build the roads you travel, the schools your kids attend, and the homes you live in. Everywhere you look, you will see our footprint. Our story is one built on on the talent, dedication, and performance of our employees. Hardworking San Antonians just like you. Our mission is to be responsible stewards with respect to the safety and environmental impact of our operations and products. In other words, we want to be your good neighbor, doing the right thing, the right way, all the time. The Vulcan way. Who are we? We're the ones helping to build a rock-solid future in San Antonio. Vulcan Materials Company, proud sponsor of Thursday Night Lights and Scholar Athletes. Watching the America's Diamond Halftime Show. Welcome back to Bernie, Texas, where the champion Chargers lead Alamo Heights 14 to 10 here at halftime. Our America's Diamond Halftime Show continues with a look at our Ahia highlights. This game got off started with a bang as Gage Maples, the linebacker, hit six to start the game, intercepting Carson Kaiser and taking it the distance to make the Score seven nothing Alamo Heights, but on the very next drive, the Chargers answer. Alex Rodriguez goes in, that tied it up at seven. Heights took a 10-7 lead with a field goal, but then Kaiser hits Ryan Brandon right before the end of the half, and it's 14 to 10 Chargers here at the break. When we come back, we'll kick off the second half action. It's been a good one. Stick with us. Alamo Heights and Bernie Champion. The second half is next. Thanks for watching the America's Diamond Halftime Show. Stay tuned for the second half kickoff. Welcome back to Bernie, Texas. The Chargers fired up and how good is our crew? The camera work on the massive run through the Chargers breathing fire. Up Getting ready to try to add to that lead, but here come the Mules. They're excited as well. A lot of energy here in the building tonight, and we're expecting a great second half of football. How about these spirit squads going all out with the smoke game and all of that? It's all good, man. Feel like you're in a swamp. Impressive. Very nice. Well, we knew we'd get a defensive struggle, right? I mean, Alamo Heights last week against Medina Valley pitching the shutout, and really Bernie Champion's defense has carried them all season long. It's kind of indicative of what we're seeing on the scoreboard here tonight. Alamo Heights doing a really good job cashing turnovers in for points. And right now it's time for our second half kickoff sponsored by the r &L Certified Auto Group. The Mules will get it first here in the second half. Ethan Lang will tee it up. Bennett Angulo and Jaden Scott back to receive. That ball will go out of bounds and that will draw a flag. We'll head down to Zach Hedrick who spoke with both coaches during halftime. Zach? Yeah, thanks, Don. I mean, both. Coach Riddeman and Coach Kaiser are very complimentary of each other. They said, what a great half of football. And then both of them really kind of said the same thing. It's just like if our offenses step up a little bit, the defense has been playing great. They just got to cut down on the penalties and the mistakes. So we're buckled up for a great second half. Yeah, it's been some intense play. And it looks like Alamo Heights is going to make them kick it again. So we'll start it over usually you have the the option there and any teams just comfortable taking the football 
at pretty decent field position, but the way Bernie Champion is kicking off, they're not they're not going deep. They're they're doing that kind of squib halfway thing, and there are some opportunities for a good return when that's the case. This is Will Wallace who's going to kick off. And that one is going to be taken right at about the 30-yard line. That's their big star running back, George Flesher. He's still on his feet. And he's finally pushed back there at about the 36. It's about where they would have had it anyway. So the Mules will... Start the second half with James Sobey at the quarterback position, 6'4", 195. Had a good first half. This offense had some opportunities. Was able to get 10 points. They also had a chance to score down in the red zone. Were not able to convert first and goal from the one. Had to settle for a Fong Bien field goal. But they've also done a real nice job of running the football and moving the chains. It's a very good defense. The Mammoth contracting first down. They'll hand it to Flesher. He tries to go wide, cuts it back inside. But again, that's that interior defensive front led by Luke Heck, big number 90, and Landon Eads, big number 99. If you're just joining us, Eads is 6'3", 285, and an all-district performer who's going to play at the next level somewhere. Luke Heck, also all-district. Big athletic defensive lineman for the champion Chargers. Second down and eight for James Sobey. Splits everybody out of the backfield, takes a straight drop. Running out of time, goes deep over the middle. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage and a good breakup again. I'll tell you what, making a case to be the player of the game tonight is Leighton Parker, who is really good in single coverage. Well, that was a heck of a throw right there by James Sobey and good protection. Able to get the ball off with a nice throwing lane and couldn't have thrown it much better than that. Just went right off the noggin of John York. Third down and eight for Alamo Heights. They move Flesher out of the backfield. Sobe looks his way and now scrambles. Running for his life. He's in big time trouble and he's going to be sacked. That champion defense getting it done again. Landon Eads was there, and he also had some help that time from Barrett Stewart. Well, we got a flag down on the play, but what a luxury for a defense when you can rush three guys and then get this much pressure, and then they got some help there at the end, but just a really tough time throwing the football when you can drop that many guys into coverage. It's going to set up fourth down, and so Ron Ritterman runs his punting unit out. Sobe, the quarterback, stays on to punt on fourth and 15. Gets this one off clean. Nieves is going to let it roll. And it takes a nice Alamo Heights bounce and goes inside the 30, almost all the way down to the 25-yard line. And that's how, where we will see Carson Kaiser for the second half, his first possession. And he really came on late in the first half, second quarter, as he struggled a little bit early, had two turnovers, threw an interception on the first drive, fumbled on the next, but he settled down and... Really done a nice job finding Rand, Ryan Brandon and Reed Cantrell. Look out for Davis Pike. Haven't seen much of number three tonight, but he is one of the favorite targets and very explosive. Get it out to Cantrell. He's forced out of bounds. Check, that's a picket on the reception. And that's a nice gain of about six on first down. Montreal Cole, the junior DB, doing a great job riding that receiver right out of bounds. Sets up second down and four. Alex Rodriguez has been a very potent threat. As they run picking on a little sweep, cuts it back inside, and a good tackle there by the linebacker Parker Klump 
who did a nice job of going one-on-one -on -one in space and being able to bring him down. Yeah, I mean, this Alamo Heights defense, obviously, the score is what it is because of those two huge turnovers that they created in the first quarter. Three receivers to the right. They play action, fire that way, completed to Cantrell. That's a good enough for a Mammoth contracting first down and a nice strike by the coach's son, Carson Kaiser. Yeah, I'm not really sure how he was able to thread that one in there because Alamo Heights, they've got some huge DBs. There was a lot of traffic over there and that was a heck of a throw. Four wides now, two to each side. Looks left, looks right the whole time. Fires that way, incomplete. Cantrell, the intended receiver. Yeah, Rontrell Cole again. And a couple other guys getting over there. And it's just some heavy traffic. Get the sense that Cole likes the challenge. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly not giving anything, giving anything away in the size game, that is for sure. They bring Pike to the right-hand side. They turn and hand inside to Rodriguez, and that's as good a job as Heights has done all game long in trying to stop him. Nice play right there in the middle by the junior linebacker, Rowan Irwin. Just kind of shot through there and made a play in the other end of the line of scrimmage. So now Champion's looking at third and long. Third and 10, they'll get the play from Coach Kaiser. And Chuck, you talked about it a little bit at halftime off air. I wouldn't be surprised to see some more of those crossing patterns that were so successful there late in the first half. Instead, they run Rodriguez, who does a nice job cutting inside. Maybe they're thinking two down territory? Yeah, I think they were. You know, I think if you run it on, <laughs> of course we're wrong. <laughs> I was thinking right along there with you. It's like if you're going to run it on fourth down, I mean on third down, then maybe you got another play on fourth down. But Coach Kaiser deciding to run out his punt team here, managing the scoreboard up four points. Ethan Lang will punt it away. Good snap. Gets it off in time, angles it. May have gotten too much of that one. It does. Rolls it into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. Heights will have it back when we come back. Down 14 to 10 here in Bernie. Welcome back, it's our Plumbing Today band camp. Alamo Heights Trails champion, 14 to 10, 8, 13 to go. James Sobe has the ball back. On his own 20 yard line, low snap, gets it out. Completes it out to his favorite target tonight, John York. Picks up about six, nice first down game. Really impressed with these corners from champion two. I mean, Leighton Parker, how many times have we called his name tonight? I mean, they put those guys out there on an island and they are very confident that these guys are gonna end up bringing down the ball carrier. And so far, that's exactly what they've done. Carver and Serber both, I mean, Parker and Serber both as we hand it off to George Flesher. Alamoich's offense has had a really tough time running the ball in the interior. We, we've been singing the praises so much of Landon Eads and Luke Heck. And, there's just a not not a lot there for Alamo Heights, and they, they did a nice job of you know getting a manageable situation on first down with the six-yard pickup. Well, Eads really exploded on the scene last year late during their playoff game. He had five sacks and a forced fumble against Cal Allen, and he hadn't stopped since then. Third down and about four. They're just going to run it to the right. Sobey's got nowhere to go, and. There he is, Landon Eads with the tackle. Right at the yard marker. 
It's going to be well short of the first down. About a yard, a little less than a yard. They got a really generous spot here. And Ron Ritterman will run out his punt team. Both teams will play conservative, I would think, in this very tightly contested defensive one-score game. A lot of these games you'll see teams go for it in this situation. They're going to fake it here. Sobey's in trouble. And he's going to be brought down. And it backfired. I thought they'd be conservative, but with Sobey as the quarterback, they decided to fake it. It didn't get executed very well, and the Charger defense holds, and now they've got great field position. 6-12 to go. Champion trying to capitalize when we come back. Closed captioning for today's game is sponsored by Texas Water Advisor. A lot of questions about this. Don't think it was a fake now on second look. It just kind of clipped one of the blockers. And not any fault of the snapper. There's not really a window to get that thing through there. Very interesting situation. And Chuck, you brought up the, the point earlier that Champion was getting a lot of pressure on those punts. In fact, they got a hand on the last one. It was deflected. And it looked like that may have been a new formation to try to block better. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good observation on your part. I'm going to go with you because I still don't know what the heck that was. <laughs> where do you, if you're the center, where do you snap that ball? As Kaiser runs it into the Central Med red zone, and all of a sudden, Champions got really good field position and the momentum here trying to go up 21 to 10. They run it inside. Alex Rodriguez has stopped for a short game. It'll be first down and 10. They're going to have a chance to get a first down at about the one and a half. They spread out Cantrell to the near side. They fire his way, and he's just got a little miscommunication there on the route. Well, Don, I mean, we talked about Alamo Heights and how they played such a clean first half. You know, they didn't turn the ball over, and yeah, even though they had their struggles on offense, the fact they were in a 14-10 game because their defense had created two turnovers. Well, that's not a turnover per se, but man, it sure does put your defense in a tough spot, and it's pretty much equal to a turnover because of the field position that, you know, neither team has really enjoyed much of tonight. Second down and 10. They fake it to A-Rod and do a little jump pass and good read there by the Alamo Heights defense as they break it up. Rontrell Cole there, but also the linebacker who dropped saw it coming. And I believe that was 43, 24, Cody Burke. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, Alamo Heights, you just sniffed it the whole way. I mean, they had guys in position everywhere on that. It was going to be a tough play to pitch and catch third and 10 they hand it to a rod he goes forward he breaks another tackle gets near the first down marker and it'll be third down in about a yard yeah, they're bringing in some big guys but it looks like they are running out the kicking team they're, they sure are it's fourth down my bad they're running out Ethan Lang. That's Will Wallace. Lang is going to hold now. They both kick. We've seen both. Wallace kicks it through. And they go up a touchdown. 17 to 10. Champion. 5-14 to go as they add more points. But wait a second. We may have a roughing the kicker. That may be a first down. Because even if it's running into or whatever it is, it's it's going to be a first down. They're going to do, take the points off the board. They'll be first and goal. Jumbo, he's called it Jumbo. So they're going to, they got a first down. Half the distance to the goal gave them the first down because it was it was fourth and one. 
Let's bring in Zach down on the sideline. Zach? Yeah, Coach Kaiser was getting the explanation from the White Hat here, and he was, Coach Kaiser was hoping for a first down, but the White Hat told him it was just going to be half the distance to the goal, so that just got him to the two, and they need to get to the one. Okay, so they didn't get the first down. Okay, so it's four. The, the marker decided to give up on this series. <laughs> the chains on the far sideline. So we're going to guess that it's fourth and one. Yeah, look who's in the backfield, 99. He blocks, they hand, and it's going to be close. I believe it's enough for the first down, but are they going to mark him short? I'm confused about what's going on with this officiating crew here in the, in the, in the chains. The referee said it's going the other way, but they've got to mark, they've got to measure this. If you look on the far side of the field where the sticks are, they're normally right on the sideline. They back them way up. So we, we can't, we don't have a good look or the normal look that we would have of the down and distance. Of course, we don't have the yellow marker, the yellow line. So this entire series has been a bit confusing. Well, let's see what we got. Stoned by the Heights Mules. By that much. Missed, Missed it, by it by that much. That much. Wow, what a huge defensive stand that was, huh? Alamo Heights' defense has been standing up all night, equal to the task there, and we are back in 15 seconds. San Antonio International is the first and only airport to use the Light Strike robot, which is proven to destroy hard to kill viruses, to include the virus that causes COVID-19, providing the highest level of cleanliness so you can fly easier, fly safer, and fly confident. All right, so we've had Quite a turn of events here. Early in the second half, we had a, a punt that we thought was a fake that ended up just being a bad snap. A decision to go for it. Kick points taken off the board. A stop by Alamo Heights, and now they are in a tough spot here. Backed up in their own goal line. One-on-one -on -one coverage. They'll throw it on first down, and they almost complete it. York tried to make a one-handed grab and almost had a big-time play. Chuck, this is not the position you want to be in if you're, Al you're Alamo Heights. You're, you're great, you know, grateful to get the stop, but when you're going against Landon Eads and Luke Heck, they're going to pin their ears back here on the half-yard line. Well, I mean, I don't blame Riddiman for doing exactly what they're doing. I mean, it's going to be tough to move the football off the line running it with those big beasties that champions got up there in the middle i mean why not take a shot you got single coverage on the outside and you're down in this football game yeah you got to be very careful with the football no question yeah, you think champion might just bring the house here and leave those guys on an island and take your chances whistle blows i think ritterman's going to call timeout I mean, again, that's the beauty of where champion is in this football game, right? So they already had the lead. They know if they don't pick up the first down, they've got their defense back on the field and Alamo Heights in a tough spot in the shadow of their own goal line. But again, I had no problem with trying to be a little aggressive in this spot too, because you know, you're just one big play away from taking the lead in this game. Yeah, it was a false start, so it's half the distance. So that ball is basically touching the goal line. They do the same thing, York one-on-one, -on -one. he's got it. Let's see his speed. Jack York, 99 and a half, ties the all-time record for t longest play. Man, I love that play call, Don Harris. I love it. I mean, why not take a shot? You're not going to move the ball running it. So they got singled up on the outside. Let your guy go make a play, and that was a dime by the Alamo Heights quarterback. My goodness, she couldn't have thrown it any better. Now the guy's a pitcher on the baseball mound. You know, he's probably thrown some strikes before, but none bigger than that one. And they almost had it the, the first time where he tried the one-handed catch. They went right back to it, and you're right. It's a good play call. We're going to have to queue up the Jawan Anderson play from Sam Houston to see where the spot is. Either way, they're both 99. 
but for technical purposes, I believe that's going to be the longest play in TNL history. <laughs> How yeah, could right? it be any longer? Right before they snapped it, I said the ball is basically touching the goal line. And these receiving core guys for Alamo Heights, too, all good students. York plays baseball, too. So how about that? That's blocked. And now we got a possibility of champion trying to cash in on the other end, although they do stop the extra point. So it's 16-14 Alamo Heights after some fireworks here early in the third. James Sobe to John York. Gone. On the left, you got Ramonte Prime to Jawan Anderson on October 1st, 2015. It's the longest play in the history of TNL from Alamo Stadium. On the right, the play that just happened, John York on the receiving end. Who's faster, Jawan Anderson or John York? That's about a tie. Oh, that's good stuff. It's a photo finish and it's a tying record, and there can never be one any longer, that's for sure. Well, again, you know, Alamo Heights, your defense is keeping you in this game with the two turnovers, and, and they're put in a tough situation here midway through the third quarter, and they rise up, and then the offense takes its shot, goes for the home run, and connects. What a ball game, and can't understate what just happened on that extra point. No, I mean, yeah. a champion, gotten that ball on the dead run. I mean, they could have technically tied this game and made a little three-point swing out of it. The only thing better than the touchdowns and the highlights and the energy tonight is our director, Brian Watts, and Chris Kotfuss in the booth calling up five-year-old record plays in no time at all. Great job, guys, in the truck. Champion's going to have good field position after Davis Pike returns that one to almost midfield. And why not use this opportunity as good a time as any, how blessed Chuck and I are to work with the best guys in the business. Man, there's no question about that. I mean, it, teeing it up every single time we get a chance to come out here and do a game. My camera crews working hard, moving trucks and all this equipment in one night from Alamo Stadium out here to Bernie, the setup. John and Arthur up there on top. They're, I'll tell you what, uh, they're as good as any college football broadcast. We're not, but they are. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Here's Champion on the run. Now they're going on attack mode. Aiden Pickett with the gain there. That moves the chains. Mammoth contracting first down. Kaiser rolling left, fires. That's completed. Reed Cantrell has it. Good defensive, hard fought football game with some offensive fireworks. And now a sense of urgency from Bernie Champion. I mean, I think they just got sucker punched, and now they want to exert their will in this football game. Kaiser throws it, it's tipped again, guess who? Gage Maples, he's got an interception, now two deflections and a little bit of a oh, man. cramp or something going on, maybe a stinger. I don't know, I've seen that before. I hope that's all it is, and sometimes that thing gets a little loose in there. And it was from the deflection, huh? Yeah. Maybe it was when he stretched it. Well, shaking it off. Well, it stayed right in socket where it needs to be. <laughs> Third and six, Kaiser rolling left. Now he fires, got a man, caught it. Across the 20 into the Central Med red zone is Ryan Brandon. He's already made a huge play at the end of the first half. And great job by Ka Carson Kaiser to sprint out and then set his feet and deliver. And that was a missile, too. First down and 10, he fires this way. That's caught again by Brandon, and closing quickly was Rontrell Cole to make the tackle. He's had a nice ball game, too. Closed in a hurry. I'll tell you what, because one, 
has been a problem when he's getting loose out there so far tonight. Second down and six, they hand it to Rodriguez. He busted up the middle. I'll tell you what, a good job of one-on-one -on -one tackling by Cody Berker. That was going to be a touchdown as hard as A-Rod runs. And a good job, too, by the champion coaching staff as well. You know, you got them on their heels a little bit, throwing the ball, and then you give it back to your playmaker, Tote and the Rock. Mama's contracting first down inside the Central Med red zone. They run it to Rodriguez. He's dropped right there at the five. But again, the Charger offense, just like they did after the very first turnover of the night when they answered with that drive, putting a similar drive together here. Got an official's timeout. A player down. We'll take a look at our TNL top 10. The champion Chargers have been moving up the entire season, they're now ranked number four behind Johnson, Judson, and Reagan. Again, next Friday night, we'll have number two Judson against number six Smithson Valley, both with only one loss on the year. That'll be our ball game next Friday night. We won't be with you on Thursday. We're doing Friday instead next week. You see the rest of the top 10. Southside had their game tonight canceled because their opponent had a COVID outbreak. So they'll stay at four and one. And we'll see how this changes after the, tonight's action. Southside, one of the really good, pleasant surprises of the season, playing outstanding football. And you see you know, the likes of Steele starting to come on and hit their stride. Roosevelt, that's two years in a row now. They're going to be a tough out for anybody. So a lot of these teams starting to exert their will on the rest of the area with how they're playing football. No question. It's been such an odd year with teams. You know, you look at everybody's records, and there's teams that are 5-0, and and there's teams that are 1-1 one and one because of the difference of how you've had to play games and who's been able to play games. A little fake reverse. They stay with Rodriguez. And he only gets about a yard down to the four. Good to see Sean Bright able to walk off the field. So a nice counter punch so far by champion this is where the heights are back this is where the heights defense bowed up and held last time with guys like gage maple maples and parker clump in the middle making big plays along with cody burke and they answer the bell again it's burke right there to help drop a rod cody burke that was a man-sized <laughs> tackle right there rowan Irwin as well there two drives in a row it's going to go down to fourth down now and they're going to run out will wallace to see if they can make it 17 16 and give him the lead buck 50 left here in the third as you can see here with his stats has not missed a kick all year including the last one that they took off the board and he stays true to form Right down the middle for Will William Wallace. Tell you what, Don, both of these teams on special teams have come dangerously close to making a huge play. And we saw Champion able to do that on the last extra point. But I'll tell you what, Alamo Heights has been awfully close to blocking too. Connor McGrath took a great angle on that last extra point and darn near got through to clip it. You just get the sense that there's going to be a special teams play in this game that's going to have an effect at some point. I'm getting the sense that we're going to have like a Fredericksburg, Batlin, Billy, Bernie Greyhound fantastic finish here tonight, the way this one's shaping up. Yeah, that's right. Have a little revisit from what we had on week one. Same ballpark. Just feels that way tonight. A lot of energy, great weather, great teams. High level execution, both sides of the ball. Entertaining football game as Wallace puts his left foot into this one. A high kick going to be taken right about the 28 yard line. And he's got a seam all the way down to the 45 is the up man, George Flesher. He's their starting running back. So not necessarily know you want to let him field the football. He's used to running it. Well, if Tanner Lee, 42, doesn't get a hand on that foot, that thing's 
going an awful long way. I don't know if he'd have housed it, but that had big play written all over it. Nice job, Tanner Lee. And I know why they ran that 99-yard route on the last drive, but you may see that they may have found a spot there where they can go back to John York. He's still singled up. Let's see if they decide to kind of see what he's got. Sure enough, they're going at him again. Some contact made, but no flag. They just trip feet as uh, Leighton Parker again with good coverage. We've got a Beluga player profile on Jaden Yevis. This guy's been all over the place tonight. Good size and great motor. He's first team all district a year ago. Six foot, 185 is our Beluga Air player profile. Yeah, and you get the sense too, I mean, we've seen Nevis all over the field tonight that, you know, a lot of these Bernie Champion guys, <laughs> same with the Alamo Heights defenders, man, they all have high motors. Everybody's involved tonight. Second and 10. You get the sense that Sobey's a little more comfortable right now, but not with that kind of pressure. The big boys again, heck and Eads. Right there, Luke Heck getting there first on this one. Yeah, it's just awfully difficult. Just the pressure that these big guys are able to create. And if it doesn't happen quickly, it's going to be really, really tough. I mean, just three guys staying active and staying after it. One of them's going to eat. Third and 20. It's just the fourth sack. Or excuse me. The second sack tonight for Luke Heck and his fourth of the year. Third down and long. Here comes pressure again. It was Heck again. Forced Sobey to run. He's running for his life. He throws into coverage. And now we've got a flag all the way over here on the champion bench. And it's going to be an illegal man downfield on Alamo Heights just because it took so long for that play to develop that one of the big guys up front was more than five yards downfield. I don't know that Champion wants to accept this unless there was pass interference later, but I didn't see a second flag, did you? So they've got <laughs> three penalties. Holding on the offense. They're going to replay the down. It's offsetting because there was some pass interference. Well, first of all, Luke Heck did a great job blowing up that play. There you see the hit. And James Sobey doing a great job then stepping up, giving his receiver a chance to make a play, which he unbelievably did. Wow. That's Rhett Anderson somehow sticking out one hand and hauling that thing in. The sophomore making a play, unfortunately, that will not count. Poor Red Anderson, that's a highlight reel play that nobody's gonna ever think, remember. Flags fly again, but yeah, there were three penalties on the play. Le illegal man down field, hold, and the pass interference, and now another false start this time against Alamo Heights. See, Don, I can put you on the spot, though. See, you can make that one of your play of the week plays nominees. of the week nominees. Yeah. It's still pretty bad A. It is. <laughs> it's it on is. cam. And we had one last night. 14 of Memorial made a heck of a one-handed catch. Here's Sobey looking deep again, pressured again. The Bernie defense doing a great job of pressuring. That one may have been completed again by the same young man, Red Anderson. They give it to him? No, they're going to call it incomplete. Again, here comes the pressure, and Luke Heck is starting to get super hot, pushing the defender way back. Sobey doing an outstanding job again, stepping up, but it's a little nudge there for his trouble at the end. Sobey's taking a couple shots after he's released the football. But he's doing the right thing as a young quarterback, right? I mean, the pressure's coming, and you've got to step into the pressure. Yep, and he's hanging in there and trying to make a play. Another high punt fielded right at the 41-yard line. So Champion took the lead on the last possession on a field goal by William Wallace. 
And now they're going to try to add to that lead. Now this will be the last play of a very exciting third quarter. Great football game. We knew it would be when we scheduled it. We said this year we're going to be, you know, the COVID thing, although that it, it delayed the start of the season and all of that, it did give us some opportunities from a scheduling perspective to be able to add the Friday night games and we circle this one on the calendar because of one of the great rivalries in town. Last play of the quarter. Carson still on his feet. Kaiser across the 45. Ball comes out late, but they're going to whistle it down. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. A real good one here in Bernie. 17-16. And when we come back, we'll have our fourth quarter of action. Who knows? Maybe another fantastic finish here from Bernie, Texas. Welcome back, time for our AirServe third quarter highlights. And what a highlight it was. An all-timer, a record that will never be broken. James Sobe to John York. 99 officially, 100 for all that it's worth. And Alamo Heights went back in front, but champion kicked the field goal. They lead it 17-16 as we start the fourth quarter here at Bernie. ISD Stadium. Yeah, right. It was a long 99 yards. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like we say, you know, it's a no, long be two. Third, third long two. two. Yeah, long two. It was a long 99. Kaiser wings it out, completes it. That's Cantrell. You're be watching Dylan Cantrell play somewhere. Well, you know what? I keep, I keep call, I keep not being able to read the 16 versus the 15. And let's say Reed maybe lost a few pounds there. <laughs> but I got it too. Aiden Pickett. Rodriguez is going to pick up the first down. Yeah, that's a good old fashioned bully ball right there. Got some dirty yards now in this fourth quarter, trying to nurse a one point lead. He's been getting them all game long. South Texas Votech first down as they run that little sweep to the near side. Good action again by the Alamo Heights defense. I mean, Gabe Maples once again, there, there was nowhere to go with that football except right back up the middle because he completely cut that off at the pass. I thought I saw Pickett get twisted there at the end of that play. He's walking gingerly as they split three to the near side. Kaiser's going to look that way. Boy, they had a hook and ladder there if they wanted it. They, they got a first look. down, too, if they wanted that. They may want to <laughs> look at that for, for add to the playbook if they ever get in a desperate situation. Completed it to Davis Pike. We said at the beginning of the second half that Davis Pike hadn't been hurt from much and that he was one of their big weapons. Kaiser finds him on that play. Hands inside to A-Rod. He pops it. And he's got himself another gasher. And I believe another South Texas Votech first down, depending on the spot, they'll move the sticks. Yeah, two guys playing good football there and good sportsmanship at the end. But look at this. There's not a whole lot there in that crease. <laughs> 25, putting a foot down and getting upfield. He does a great job of finding it every single time. 17-16, champion on the Move with a one-point lead. Another South Texas Votek first down as we tick inside at 10 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Low snap, good handle by Kaiser who goes one-on-one -on -one to the five-yard line incomplete as he was looking for Davis Pike again. Tell you what, Don, of all the games we've done this year, I mean, this is probably the best overall game we've seen from a collection of corners on both sides. I mean. Alamo Heights has the one home run, but overall, I mean, these DBs have been really lights out tonight. No question about it. Good, really single coverage, blanketed coverage all night long as they pitch it to A-Rod, try to get him to the outside. He cuts it back, not before he gets another three or four yards. It's a really solid drive here, running the football for Bernie Champion. 
chipping away at the clock, trying desperately to make this an eight-point game if possible. Rowan Irwin on the tackle. Of course, Ron Ritterman asking his defense to rise up again, at least try to hold him to a field goal attempt here, make it a one-score game. Third down and five. They hand it to Rodriguez, he's got the five, he's got a lot more than that. He's all the way down to about the 11-yard line. A little counter action was successful earlier tonight. They haven't done it a lot, but when they've needed a big run or a big play, that's been a nice little, nice little play for these Bernie Champion Chargers right here. Another Man, look this guy's it. got great feet. Really does a good job of picking the hole. Here he is again. Kind of stutter steps, met right there at the line of scrimmage this time. And these linebackers from Alamo Heights are physical as well. We've talked so much about the champion defensive front. Very impressed tonight with the Alamo Heights linebacking core. No doubt. And that was a sophomore right there, Tommy Colligan, jumping through there and making a play. Hey, Colligan, man. <laughs> 8.35 to oh, go. Hello. That one's tipped. Kaiser, I think, thought it might have been a fumble, but his arm was going forward. That's back-to-back -back plays for 45, the young sophomore getting back there. So showing off his skill set. Hard to get on the field as a sophomore in any program, much one, much less one as good as Alamo Heights. So look at the size of that guy. <laughs> you know he's something special. They run to the outside, that little sweep again. It's had some success this year. Not so much on that play, so they'll run back Will Wallace on to try to add three. Again, the Alamo Heights Mules defense. After pitching a shutout a week ago, coming up with another big play. I'll tell you, somebody's gonna block a kick here at some point, dude. Again, we don't wanna jinx him. He hasn't missed all year. And I don't think he's worried about IG. William Wallace can kick it. That's what I'm talking about. It's 20 to 16. Champion adds three more. We've got 750 left to go here in Bernie. We're back in Bernie, and it's first responder night. The champion Chargers doing a great job of honoring. The real heroes, police, fire, first responders, EMS. Nice gesture by Keith Kaiser's crew. And that brings us to tonight's special uniform czar observation. The red, white, and blue logo on the side of the helmet. Not the number side, but the champion charger uh, stars and stripes side. That is normally not their logo. It's normally not red, white, and blue and stars and stripes. But they did it just for tonight to honor those first responders, and it's a nice touch. There you go. Good look at it. It's pretty slick. Goes well with the skull and crossbow. That's what I'm talking about. What do you got to do to get one of those? <laughs> Somebody had several. <laughs> Someone had to die. <laughs> First and 10, 7.53 to go. Alamo Heights trying to answer the score. They go back to York. He loses it. Did he ever have possession? They're going to give the ball to Bernie Champion. They're going to call it a completion. The line judge was right there. There's no instant replay. The play stands. But it's, it was close. It was certainly close. Cole Kennedy coming up with a loose ball. Let's see. Football move? He sure did. I think yeah. he had it. He had it, turned, took a step. That's, that's balls out. That's a good call by the line judge who was right there. Caught it, made a move. And you know Bernie Champion is thinking the same thing we are, right? 88 runs a nine route for a touchdown to give them the lead not that long ago. So they're playing off him a little bit. But once he made the reception, man, it was a bunch of dudes going for a football. Caleb Serber, who's been so good tonight, was the one who knocked it loose. And that's the third deflection to go along with a pick six for Gage Maples. Man, he does a good job of 
jumping those out routes and getting to the football. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, how many defenders tonight have we talked about having big ball games? This is just the way he breaks on the football. Yeah. Kaiser throwing out Whoa. that side, and it's gone the other way. Speaking of pick six, Alamo Heights to the house, Connor McGrath. And the mules go up top. What a play. Two of those tonight. McGrath read it, jumped it, and housed it. Read it all the way. Baited the quarterback into making a throw. And Connor McGrath, the junior defensive back, has just given his squad the lead. Wow. After the turnover on the fumble by York, you thought that Champion might have a chance to put this away, put the nail in the coffin, and all of a sudden, Fong Bien's extra point puts the Mules up a field goal, and we still have 7.30 to go here in Bernie. Well, our air conditioning service company, Smile Cam. Connor McGrath with a lot to smile about. He's, he needs the turnover chain from Memorial after that one. Man, there just been some humongous game-changing plays all night long in this game. Something tells me we're gonna see some more before it's over. I think you're right, partner. Kickoff taken at the 10. Right up the middle, you might see it right here. Davis Pike all the way to the 39. So we've seen the champion offense answer the bell tonight on a couple of different occasions. After Alamo Heights has scored, they've gotten right back up the canvas, off the canvas and moved it downfield, mostly with Alex Rodriguez, who runs with purpose, and they can go quick with him. They like to run that tempo. Time will not be an issue. Ron Ritterman's defense has really come through for him tonight, scoring You're not kidding. two touchdowns for the Mules. Yeah, and then one of their field goals was because Heights got a turnover. So, I mean, it's, it's been one big offensive play for Alamo Heights, and the rest has been its defense. They sweep it this way. The Heights linebackers there again. That was big number 90 up front. Trey Sullivan with the tackle. That'll put Champion behind the sticks a little bit. Second down and 12. I'm still trying to figure out, like, if you're going into a big ball game, which de which one of these defenses would you want to have on your team? I mean, it's, it's, it's a split deal. Inside handoff to A-Rod. He's not going anywhere. His clump is there to make the tackle. And all of a sudden, you get the sense that this Alamo Heights defense getting a little more confident against that run game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it looks like they're playing downhill, and then they should be confident with the effort that they've turned in here tonight. I mean, it's been one humongous play after another. You know, they were gashed early by Rodriguez time after time, but now they're really coming after him, and they've got Kaiser in trouble again, running for his life. He's going to be sacked. This is some kind of defensive performance. I'm running out of superlatives to talk about these guys. I mean, the coverage was absolutely amazing downfield. And then on the back end of that play, Cody Burks, the junior, making a sack. Cody Burks been everywhere tonight. He and Klump teaming up here, but it was Burke who got there first and last. Now, see Alamo Heights junking up the defense, bringing some blitzes from some different places. Lang, Lang punts it away. Did not touch a mule. Goes all the way down to the 20. So Alamo Heights has the lead and the ball with 547. Welcome back. That's our Orange Theory band cam. You're taking a look at the champion Charger band. Their defense going to try to rally them. They need the football back and a score in order to go back in front of Alamo Heights, who 
seemed to be on the ropes a couple of different times tonight, but the Mule defense has saved the day. A couple of pick sixes. I really thought that they were in a very precarious position after York's fumble. Champion had all the momentum and a, a chance to drive it, score it, put it away. Instead, Alamo Heights gets the pick six from Connor McGrath, and they're up 23 to 20. Sobe Rose left. Good play design. Good blocking. He picks up nine on first down. Yeah, I'm a big fan of when you got the lead and you got a you know, game obviously swinging in the balance right here. I am a huge fan when you've got the ball on offense in the lead to get the clock running. So that's a great, nice, safe play if you can figure out a way to keep moving the chains. And by doing so, if you can come up, Don, now looking at the clock with about 12 plays here, you can salt this game away even with Alamo Heights having all three of those timeouts. Yep, and better yet, you're in second two here, so it gives you the chance to run the ball a couple of times and keep that clock moving. Diving near the stick is their running back, but not quite getting there. I didn't think it was Bennett Flesher. As you take a look at our Monarch trophies, after the game, we'll hand the big one to the winning coach, the smaller one to our most valuable player. And if you need trophies or for anything business-wise, for awards, plaques, call Monarch Trophy at 344-3777 at mtsaawards.com. Pre-snap whistle there. That'll stop the clock with 435 here on third and one. I'm not really sure why they're snapping it with 13 seconds left on the play clock either. Yeah, and I don't think Ron Ritterman wanted to do that, so he's going to call timeout and kind of emphasize what they want to do, and we're back in 15 seconds. San Antonio International is the first and only airport to use the Light Strike robot, which is proven to destroy hard to kill viruses to include the virus that causes COVID-19, providing the highest level of cleanliness so you can fly easier, fly safer, and fly confident. So third down and one, a very, very important play in this ball game. If you're Alamo Heights and you pick it up, you get a chance to run at least a couple more minutes off the clock. If you're champion and you stone it, you get the football back because there's no way they're going to go for it at this end of the field with this small of a lead. And so if you're the Chargers, you're really relying on those two big fellas up front, Luke Heck and Landon Eads. We'll see what Ron Ritterman does here. Does he throw the football or does he run it here on third and one? Less than one. Go to Sobe, they run it right up the middle. He's got Flesher rather. Flesher's got the outside as well. Across the 50 to the 45 yard line. A huge game. That's Bennett Flesher. He's just the sophomore. Big brother George is the junior who carries most of the load. But that's Bennett, his second carry of the night. Both of them coming in the last <laughs> few plays. I'm laughing because it's like, hey, game on the line. We need to run. We need to do something. You know, let's just bring in the sophomore, give him the call. And then how about the headiness of making sure he stayed in bounds? Yeah, exactly. I was getting ready to say that. Stays in bounds. Stop clocks momentarily to move the chains. That's a South Texas Votech first down. Very smart play to keep it moving. And Alamo Heights now with a chance to run this out here. The champions home field. They'll run it to Bennett Flesher again. He picks up two. Now, if you're Keith Kaiser, what do you do? Remember at the end of the first half, he had three timeouts with about 3.40 to go, about this exact same time, and he started burning them thinking he could get a stop in the ball back. Well, both these coaches are really good at managing the game, so you know, let it go and see if you can get a stop here on this set of downs. If they pick up another first down, though, you're going to have to start using it. Yeah, and on, on, and on, on first down there where they only pick up two, uh, I think he might burn one here depending on what happens. Let's see, 313 to go, second and eight. Sobe, quarterback draw, run all the way. He's dropped, and they'll take one. Kaiser burns one of them right there, especially after a big loss like that, because now it's going to be third and about 20. Yeah, so now if you're Alamo Heights, obviously it's 
going to be really tough to pick up the sticks. So you got to do something to at least make Champion burn a timeout. Correct. I'm thinking, you know, if it's me, I'm running a draw. Yeah, draw a little screen or something, something that's safe, safe that you yeah. know that you can complete that, and make sure that guys know that you got to stay in bounds. Make them at least have to use one of those TOs that they got over there. Yeah. The biggest importance here, not necessarily picking it up, but you don't want to throw it in completion. Stop the clock and then punt the football. You've got to force him to burn a timeout. But this is also an Alamo Heights offense that's been very aggressive today. Think about the 99-yard play. So. Yeah, and again, too, I mean, I don't know if there's anything a given on these punts tonight either. So there's a lot to sift through for both of these teams here playing this ball game. We know one thing, it's going to go down to the wire again here at Bernie ISD Stadium. Thanks to Stan Leach for being another great host out here. Stan's standing up too, man. He's into it. Third and 18. Sobey's going to go deep into coverage. No call. A little bit of contact, but it stops the clock at 2.59. Champion doesn't have to burn a timeout, and Alamo Heights will punt it away. Well, you know, that's one of those things. They're playing to win a football game, too. So they were probably thinking along the lines that we were, Bernie Champion, that they're going to do something, try to keep something in front of us, worry about us burning a timeout. And instead, Alamo Heights took a shot at that first down marker. And if they'd have gotten that, that would have really put Champion in a world of hurt. So a little different philosophy. And, you know, got a couple guys get tangled up down there, incidental contact, but close to getting it. They get the snap through. They get the punt off. And it's taken by Nieves. And Ooh. he makes the tackler pay. And he's still talking on the sideline. That was just good, clean football right there, man. Two guys going at it. And Nieves bringing a little something, something to the proceedings. You may want to put that guy on offense for this drive. Hey, maybe Jaden Nieves can be the uh, JD collision of the game from an offensive perspective. Alex Arnold, one of our Beluga Air player profiles, two-year starter, all-district, team, team captain. He's on the Unity Council. Does a great job there over at Alamo Heights. He was a scholar athlete. Yes, he was. Kind of like a very bright kid with a chance to play at the next level. Inside handoff. A-Rod going nowhere. That Alamo Heights defense has really risen to the occasion in the second half. Again, think back to the first half when Rodriguez was averaging about 10 yards a carry. Not so much over the last three drives. Well, there's nothing wrong with Kaiser's arm, so very interesting to see if they get a home run opportunity here. 2.30, second down and nine. Kaiser straight drop, fires into coverage again. He was looking for A-Rod, who's helped up there. Incomplete. That sets up third down and nine. Champion still has two timeouts left. And Alamo Heights still pressing these guys, too. This is fun. A heavyweight championship match going back and forth. Kaiser back to pass. Throws incomplete. There's a flag down. We'll see what that is. Was it holding on an offensive lineman trying to protect him? Could be hands to the face on the Alamo Heights. You never know. Looks like it's going to go against Champion. They're asking Ron Ritterman what he wants to do with the option. Block below the waist. That's sure a was. big one, too. That's 15. Yep. I think you got to take it, right? I mean, is it still third down? It'd be third down at about 25, or do you make them punt it? I don't think they're going to punt it. That's the problem. So if you decline, yeah, you back them up. Back them up then, third and 24. Let's see. They decide to do defensively. I like the fact that Alamo Heights is still getting after it. There's no prevent defense out there tonight. The Mules trying to 
come in here and win on the road. Kaiser scrambling, pressured, fires. That may have been intercepted by Maples again. He thought he had it in bounds. There's a flag down. Man, they are getting some pressure on the quarterback. We'll see what the call is by Jim Sartwell. Now there's a hands to the face. Alamo Heights, that's going to be 15 that way. Not going to be enough for the first down unless it's an automatic, is it? <laughs> Personal foul, automatic first down. Well, what's interesting is, is we've got a big, massive fight in the trenches tonight. We see it play after play. It's almost a pick, too, as you said, although obviously it would have been either way. Not out I'm trying to figure this out. It's not an automatic first down. It's third down and nine. I thought it was. They're not. They're still, this, this crew's been doing this to us a couple of times tonight. It's an automatic first down, okay. <laughs> I thought it was. That's pretty emphatic. Automatic first down. Inside handoff, Alex Rodriguez. Drilled by Maples, but not before he picks up about seven. Under two minutes to go, second down and three. Kaiser rolling out, firing deep, incomplete. Just off the outstretched hands of his wide receiver out there. Made a couple big plays tonight already. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Brandon. Ryan Brandon, <laughs> really nice route. So it's at third and three. Tell you what. Rodriguez puts you in such great position on first down runs of seven yards. Right. Yeah, I mean, again, the whole playbook's open to him if they want to run it here first. And they do, and he's got it. Another South Texas Votech first down for Alex Rodriguez. And with this kind of time left, with two timeouts, and with the struggles they've had in the passing game tonight, you might just rely on 25 here. Kaiser rolling out, scrambling. Coming back this way, being pressured, fires, and it's picked off. Interception, Alamo Heights. Jaden Scott. Three huge interceptions by the Mule defense. Time after time in this football game, the Alamo Heights defense has just made a stand. Again, pressure on the quarterback, flushing him out, and Scott doing a really good job just sitting down and making a play. He's inbounds, great camera work, guys. Oh, and the ref's right on top of it as well, and emphatically singled, signaled first down for Heights. What a defensive performance by these mules. Great camera work by Tremaine of our crew right there. Inside handoff. Remember, Ch champion still got two timeouts left. Don't take it yet after a first down gain of about an inch or two. Here's another look. Watch 26. He's got his foot down. He's got his knee down. He had about yeah. six inches to spare. Tremaine had company on that one. Good coverage by the Alamo Heights defense and, you know, the pressure up front again as they had Kaiser on the run yet again. Alamo Heights trying to salt this away. They hand it off to Bennett. Good job, Mule, snapping that ball with one on the play clock. That's how you do it right there. So, Champion will use their second timeout. And it'll be third down and 10 with 40 seconds to go. They're going to make them burn another one here. And then the challenge will be to punt it but keep it out of the end zone. Time for our JD Collision Express collision of the game. There's been a couple of really good ones tonight.
Anxious to see which one Chris Kotfuss and Brian Watts chose. And they chose that option pitch where the champion defense came to play. Leighton Parker, Leighton the Wood Parker. Knocking it out of the park with some of those hits. He had a hell of a game DB in it tonight. All these corners did. This has been some kind of fun. So JD Collision Express, collision of the game. Alamo Heights going to run another play here. Champions got another timeout. They'll want to stop it here after third down. So this is a safe running play, most likely from the Mules. They sprint out the quarterback. He's going to run about five seconds off. And Champion will stop it with 33. Sobe doing a good job running, stretching the clock as much as he could, and then most importantly, securing the football because you know Bernie Champion is going for some strips. So the, the things to watch here, there's been a very interesting uh, development all night long with this Alamo Heights punt team. They had a bad snap early. They changed their formation and clipped a guy. They seem to have figured that out. But on every single punt all night long, the champion Chargers have been within inches of blocking it. In fact, they deflected one. So if you're Ron Riddiman, you just want to make sure you get a clean operation here and get the ball off of Sobey's foot because I would think the champion would be bringing the house. Yeah, I'd almost have him punted out of shotgun formation. The way this has gone tonight. He seems deeper than he's been. But they just want a clean operation. And then champion will have it with about 25 seconds to go with no timeouts. If everything goes to plan. But they're bringing 10. He gets it off quick. Good high punt. Nieves fares, calls for a fair catch this time at his 23. Decides not to take the opportunity to run somebody over. <laughs> Which would have been the first time all night. Right. And so here we go. 29 seconds to go in the ball game. Champions got the football with no timeouts. Won't be able to really maximize really the best threat they've had all night in Alex Rodriguez. And the way Alamo Heights has been pressuring Carson Kaiser, he's been running for his life. Kaiser's thrown three picks tonight, so he's got a great chance to redeem himself here. He can make a miracle happen for the Chargers. Well, they've got some talent, as we've said, outside, so let's let it rip. Here we go. 29 seconds, first and 10. Kaiser at his own 15. That ball's tipped. Thought I may have saw a flag fly in late, but another nice job by that Alamo Heights front four getting their hands up. Alex Arnold's tipped one at the goal line already tonight. He may have got a hand on that one. Parker Klump and Roan Irwin doing a good job in there. And now we're going to have a false start against the Chargers. Rodriguez moved a little bit. That'll back him up with 23 to go. Tip of the cap to the Alamo Heights Mules. And Bernie Champion, right? I mean, this has been one heck of a show. One heck of a show. Champions seem to have this thing on the verge of being put to rest. And here come the Mules back as Kaiser goes deep over the middle. Just missed his man, Ryan Brandon. And if they complete that one, boy, we're in for a fantastic finish now. It's third and 15, and the job gets a little tougher. A great job. Even if that's completed, Alamo Heights had guys back there. So if it's completed, then the clock's winding. So I mean, again, it seems like every single snap, this Alamo Heights defense has been in the right, split, or the right place at the right time. Eighteen ticks to go. Kaiser's running again, chased, throws down the sideline, and that was almost completed. A great throw by Kaiser. 
looking for Rodriguez, who's going to be a little slow getting up. He gave everything he had to try to make that catch, and he almost did. Cody Burke, phenomenal job, again, playing right through the football on the back end. Immense pressure again on Kaiser, 24, just going right through it. Tip of the cap to Carson Kaiser, the tough night he's had. He kept his poise and put that one right on time. Running out of time though, fourth down, last shot, going deep, got him. And it's loose. Is it live or incomplete? They're gonna call it incomplete. And that's gonna be the ball game. And let's hope that young man gets up in coverage. He's moving around, that's good to see because at first glance, he, that looked really scary, but it's gotten quiet here as we take a look at Connor McGrath, the young man who had a pick six earlier. And, and while they attend to him, let's take a look at our bargain warehouse outlet play of the night. Record setter. Alamo Heights backed up to their own goal line with James Sobey let loose. Connected with John York on a 99-yard record-tying longest play in TNL history. It's the longest play in the history of high school football in the state of Texas, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's only a couple ways you can spin that, right? Right? I mean, it's not just the longest play in TNL history. It's the longest play in the history of football, unless Canada, unless you're talking about the CFL, where it's 110. Alamo Heights just has to snap it one time, and Ron Ritterman's going to come in here in his first year with two undefeated teams in this district, and he's going to leave here in first place all alone, knocking off the number four team in our TNL top ten. The Mules are three and two on the year coming in. They're going to move to three and zero oh in this district, and they'll be in sole possession of first place after a big defensive performance by the Alamo Heights Mules. That's as good as it gets if you're Ron Ritterman. Man, you're not kidding, dude. We talked about how they've gotten better week in and week out and all the challenges of being the new guy in town and you know your athletic facilities basically being demolished and they're rebuilding it and building them quite a thing out there at Alamo Heights and overcoming all of it and again, culminating with tonight's effort. I mean, just a whale of a ball game by both of these football teams. It was a treat. Sure was. Lived up to the billing. We said it was gonna be a great one coming in. It lived up to the heights. Alamo Heights 20, champion, uh, excuse me, 23, champion 20. That's our final score. When we come back, we'll hand out the hardware to the player of the game. And we'll talk to coach Ron Ritterman here on Thursday Night Lights. This is Taco Cabana Thursday Night Lights, presented by Thomas J. Henry and sponsored by Vulcan Materials Company, America's Diamond, the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, RNL Certified Auto Group, Air Serve Heating and Air Conditioning, Affordable Health Insurance Agency, Orange Theory Fitness, Air Today Heating and Air Conditioning, Guild Mortgage, San Antonio Sports, Methodist Healthcare, Plumbing Today. Texas Water Advisor, Beluga Air, Bargain Warehouse Outlet, JD Collision Express, Air Conditioning Service Company, the San Antonio International Airport, Central Med, Mammoth Contracting, and Monarch Trophies. You're watching a special Friday edition of Taco Cabana Thursday Night Lights, presented by Thomas J. Henry. Welcome back to Bernie, Texas, where tonight the Alamo Heights Mules come in and beat the Bernie champion Chargers at home in a huge game for first place in this district. And let's go down to the field and Zach Hedrick standing by with our player of the game, Gage Maples. Maples, senior, senior linebacker, had a big game tonight. He started off all the interceptions tonight with the first pick six. Gage, how did that feel? 
Amazing, my first touchdown ever in high school. And it's amazing to do it in this game with this big of a rivalry. It means so much, we love it. Well, I mean, you started off the scoring and you were telling me before this year, I mean, first time to score a touchdown couldn't have come at a better time. This is your third time playing Bernie Champion. Yes, sir. First win. Yes, sir, I mean, it means so much to me. I mean, with these guys too, I mean, we got great guys. This is a great team. And to come out with a win and be district champs like that, that's amazing. And we've got, it's just, it, I can't like put it in words, it's so amazing. Well, Gage, congrats, man. Congrats on the great game tonight. A pick six and three pass deflections. We're gonna bring in Coach Ron Riddeman now here. Uh, Coach, step on up over here yeah. next to Gage. And Coach, I mean, uh, seems like you're gonna need another bottle of Advil tonight or something like that, because man, this was just back and forth, huh? Oh, what a great high school game. Anybody that got to watch this, whether they're here or at home watching on TV, got to see what Texas high school football is all about. You know, two, two good teams just getting after it. And, and somebody had to make one extra play tonight. And luckily that was us. A guy like Gage made some really big plays for us on defense. Really changed the outcome of the game. Well, in your defense, I mean, they pitched a shutout last week. And then, I mean, they made several big plays tonight. No doubt. Our defense has really been great all year. And they seem to be getting better every week. And that's what's exciting. Uh, we're going to be open next week, but with two weeks of practice for our next opponent, we're going to expect them to be even better. So we're not going to let up, and these guys will respond. They, they work hard. They give great effort every day at practice, and I'm just happy that they get the rewards that they're working towards right now. Well, it sounds like the celebration's already begun, so we're going to give you <laughs> your trophy here, Coach, and we're going to let you guys right. get back and celebrate with Thank the team. You. Hey, we appreciate it, and we appreciate y'all coming out and, and doing what y'all do for high school football. Gage, Coach Ritterman, thanks so much. Guys, back up to y'all. All right. Thanks. All right, one of our favorites, Ron Ritterman. Uh, we love all these coaches in San Antonio. He's been around for a long, long time. He was Jim Street. He's offensive coordinator for years over at Madison and uh, really built the Johnson program, and now he's doing great things at Alamo Heights. And when we come back, we'll wrap up the highlights, tell you about next week, and put the – Ribbon on this one, Alamo Heights, big win on the road in Bernie. We'll be coming back to wrap it up right after this. Welcome back. Let's wrap it up with our Arihia highlights. What a great ball game out here in Bernie tonight. You saw our player of the game, Gage Maples, score his very first touchdown ever in high school football with a pick six to kick this one off. Bernie Champion was right there all game long, and what a great effort by Alex Rodriguez all night tonight. They went in front. Ryan Brandon had a big night. They led 14 to 10 at the half. We had a record-setting play tonight. It was James Sobey hooked up with John York for a 99-yard touchdown, again, a record that can never be broken. But the Chargers came back to take the lead, and then this changed everything. Connor McGrath with the second pick six of the night for the Mule defense. They went in front 23 to 20. They hang on and next week we're doing it again on a Friday night under the lights at Converse. Judson, Smithson Valley, two of the best programs in the state of Texas going at it in big time district play and we'll be there when TNL comes back next week with another special Friday night edition. For Chuck McAtenick, Zach Hedrick down on the sidelines, our statistician extraordinaire, Mark Kusenberger, the unbelievable producer of this whole thing, Chris Kotfus, Brian Watts in the truck tonight, doing a wonderful job as always with his entire crew. We're gonna see you right back here next week. Smithson Valley and Judson, but tonight it's the Alamo Heights Mules taking over sole possession of first place. They beat the champion Chargers 23 to 20. We'll see you back here next week on Thursday Night Lights with a special Friday night edition. So long, everybody.